so, today's the day. We finally get to sit down together, YouTube, you and me, intimately. Just ourselves, nothing to bother us. And we're going to sit down and watch uh, some Magnus Archives episodes. Well, this is going to be interesting. So today is a special uh, based on the Game Blast stuff that we did over the weekend, like a few weekends ago. And I'm going to be sitting down and talking through some Magnus Archives episodes, talking about what's going on behind the scenes and all of that kind of thing. Um, so this is your chance before the Magnus Archives ends to sit down with me one last time and talk through some like classic fan favourites. Remember, we're probably going to be doing some more stuff like this over on Twitch. So do remember, if you're watching this and you like it, give it a thumbs up. But also, why not follow us on Twitch? Because we do, like, bits and pieces like this every now and again. And if you want to be part of it, and come join the party, then why not get involved? I think it'd be really great to have you. Now, I realize I'm only about two minutes away from being live, so I'm going to have to jet YouTube. But it was great to see you, as always. And, uh, well, I guess I will see you on Saturday. Catch you there. Or, I mean, like, maybe in a minute, but whatever, you, you know what I mean. Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome to RQ Streams here on the Saturday session with me, Mike. Hello, chat. Hello, chat. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. There are so many people here today. Hello, everyone. It is great to have you all here. Oh, my lord, chat is going quick. Red Panda Tag. Hello. Sass Adorable. Hello. Catastrophic. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Dad Avocado. Hello. Zero Out. Hello. Bitter Cape. Hello. Hello, J Adams 2002. Hello, everyone. Everyone, welcome. Welcome to RQ Streams on this very special Saturday. Now today, I'm wearing, you can't really see it because the green screen effect, but I'm wearing my owl. I'm wearing my Magnus Archives t-shirt or hoodie here because today, today chat, we are going to be watching so, uh, like a choice selection of um, like various different Magnus Archives episodes. Um, this was something that I agreed to do back when we were raising money for Game Blast. We managed to raise about £4,000 for Game Blast in about four and a half hours. So I wanted to give back in some kind of way. And this was one of the ways that you guys said you might be interested in. So what we're going to be doing today, chat, is we are going to be watching, like I say, a few classic episodes. I have got four episodes of the Magnus Archives lined up. I am going to be talking you through as much as I can with regards to behind the scenes, with regards to what went on in the background, with regards to sitting around the table with people like Alex and Johnny and all of those guys. Um, and we're just going to have a good old time. I think today is going to be a nice cozy day. Yes, that, that might mean some secrets. You never know. Um, and all of this is because the Magnus Archives is going to be ending very, very soon. In fact, I believe we've only got two weeks left of the Magnus Archives before we, um, before we say goodbye. So, I figured, what a good time for us to get together for one last hurrah. Now, for those of you who remember... I used to come into the Discord every now and again, back in the day, like way back in the day. I used to come into the Discord and I used to talk about um, like what was going on behind the scenes, what was going on with the Magnus Archives and stuff like that. We used to chat about what was going on with the crew and the cast and all of those things. And I haven't done that for a while. Um, and so I figured that Twitch, now that Twitch is my new home, I figured that this could be our opportunity to get together. Know what I mean? Um, now, thank you very, very, very much to everyone who got us to and beyond a level 5 hype train before I even pressed go. That is incredible. And you are unbelievable people for helping us get there already. Um, now, I have got some great news today, chat. I've got some great news. We've actually got some special guests in the audience today because they all found out that we were going to be doing this one-off special of watching some Magnus Archives episodes. So we've got the one and only Lucky Bone somewhere in the chat right now. Um, we may even have a few more of the members of our cast and crew um, in here somewhere. Hello, Lucky. Yes, I can see you. Um, Lucky is a good friend of mine. We've performed together in the past and they said that they would come down and say hello. Um, and they're actually up at three o'clock in the morning because uh, they come from Bonnie, Australia. Um, so, hello, Lucky. Welcome to the channel. Um, and also, we might even have some, like I said, we might have some other people floating around. I know that Nico was quite keen to get in on this. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Lucky, thank you for the 20 tier 1 community gift subs. <laughs> 20? Oh my god. What the hell? I, d I, I don't even know what to say to that. I was joking when I requested this. Man. Thanks so much for doing that, Mike. No, that's You're fine. Don't you worry about it. I know you were joking when you requested this, but I agreed to it by accident. So here we are. Um, okay. Chat, it's you and me. Today is going to be a very cozy day. Hello, Martin. Welcome. Um, today's going to be a very cozy day. So here's what I want you to do, chat. Here's what I want you to do. If you've got some Magnus merch or if you've got some Rusty Quill merch with you, I want you to go and grab it right now. Like right now, go into your house or wherever you live, grab whatever Magnus stuff you have, come and sit down with me. I've got, like I said, I've got my hoodie on. I've actually got a Magnus Archives t-shirt on underneath this. Look, I've got my Magnus, where's the Magnus logo? <laughs> Somewhere here. I've got my cozy Magnus blanket as well. So I'm going to be rocking all of that today. Um, and yeah, get yourself something comfortable because we're going to strap in for some good old times. Look, I got my coffee. I've got my, um, what else have I got? I've got juice. I've got water. Like, I've got everything here. i got everything here. If you don't have any merch, that's absolutely fine. Make sure that you grab yourself a nice hot drink. You know, maybe a cup of tea, Martin, clink. And we will, we'll take it from there. Go on, guys. You've got a minute. You've got a minute. I've got my mask in my car. That's great. Go grab it. Go grab it. You've got your t-shirt. It hasn't arrived yet. Oh, right. You haven't got your t-shirt because it hasn't arrived yet. That's fine. You're too broke for merch. Then just get yourself a nice cup of tea. Get yourself a nice cup of tea. Call me. Call me Yash Yasha. Call me Yasha. Just get yourself a lovely cuppa. Something good. You know, something. Not a not tea, of course. That would be, <laughs> that would be awkward. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, Tapieri, you've got your pillow and blanket. Perfect. Excellent decision. Hello, Tessa. You've got your Mag oh, you've got your Magnus t-shirt on. Great. Very good. Tea solves everything. It does. It does indeed. You've got a couple of minutes, chat. You've got a couple of minutes. We're going to get going in just a second, but I want you guys to get comfy first. I want this to be a nice, gentle one. Uh, should I have Earl Grey or Matcha? Gotta have the Matcha, dude. I mean, Earl Grey is a classic, but get the Matcha out. Today is a special occasion, so break out those little green whatever you call them and shove them into some milk. That'll be lovely. I'll grab my Gifters coaster. Definitely grab it, Inquisitive Mind. Definitely grab that coaster. Sit with that coaster right in front of you. Prop it up a little bit so you can see it. You've still got time, chat. You've still got time. Go get yourself a cup of tea. Can we see our boys? You absolutely can. Don't you worry about that. You absolutely can. You're getting oolong. <laughs> what a decision. Someone's a season five watcher. You got your Magnus t-shirt. Wonderful. Wonderful, Astutasaurus. I am so bad at names. I'm so sorry. Yes, I will get the boy. I will get the boy. But first, get yourself some tea. What the, you've got your what the ghost hoodie on. Perfect. Perfect. You got some coffee. Very good. Oolong is good, though. It is very good, Tapiera. That is very true. Um, Jesus Christ. Cat chat is going way too fast for me. Don't worry, Kazika. Just don't look. It's all right. Sometimes I don't look. Um, and I find it easier that way. All right. Now. You said you wanted the boy. You said you wanted the boy. <laughs> the boy here. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is, the boy, <laughs> Chonko. <laughs> and Derek's right here as well, of course. Derek's right in front of me, as always. Here's, here's the boy, the Chonko. Chonko is going to be accompanying me through this. Um, so, now, chat. I think this brings me on quite nicely to something. So, I said at the beginning of the stream that I have got four episodes four episodes lined up because we're going to be doing a lot of chatting today but if we have time if we have time what i think we should do is we should vote on an episode that you would like to watch so crunchy god bless them <laughs> has agreed to take a vote on what episode you guys might like to watch so the episodes that we're going to be watching today are, before you start, before you start, you ready? We're going to be watching episode one, Anglerfish. We're going to be watching episode 97, 
Um, we all ignore the pit. We are going to be watching episode 104, Sneak Preview. And we're going to be watching episode 161, Dwelling. So, this is your spoiler warning. Those are the episodes we are going to be watching today. This is your spoiler warning. There will be spoilers in this. There will be spoilers. So, just bear that in mind, y'all. It's going to get spoilery, okay? So, there you are. How do you feel about that, Chonko? Was that clear enough? It could have been clearer. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, on top of that, obviously, you guys will get to vote for things. And don't forget, as Chonko just reminded me, there are content warnings for this stream. If you want the content warnings, exclamation mark CW will get you the content warnings for what we're going to be experiencing today. So, baby, we are going to get going. Mwah. All right. So, Chonko is going down here. Now, I'm very warm. Um, I hope you don't mind. I'm just very quickly gonna... I'm just very quickly gonna take this hoodie off because it is, it's so warm in here. I hope you don't mind. Just, I'm gonna give you the corgis just for a second while I change my hoodie. Give me a sec. Oh boy, uh, there we go. Talk about a quick change. Right. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna get going, chat. It is time. It is time. We're gonna start with episode one, Anglerfish, the episode that kicked it all off. I've still got Magnus on, look, see? Still got Magnus, although the green screen is ruining it, but yep, today we're doing some, we're doing from the beginning. We're gonna do them in chronological order as best I can. So, are you ready, chat? Episode one of the Magnus Archives, Anglerfish. The first episode that we ever produced, the first ever time I got to meet any of the Rusty Quill staff, before I even became a voice actor, we launched episode one. Before I was even brought onto the show, I didn't even know what the Magnus Archives was when episode one had released, pretty much. Like, when we were- no, not when it was released, sorry, when it was being conceived. I was there once it was released. Here we go. We're gonna pause up. We're gonna pause up this lo-fi chill beats. And we are diving headlong in to our first episode of the day. Boom. Here we are, chap. We're here. This is how we're gonna do it today. So I'm gonna be right down here. Hello. I'm going to make myself a bit bigger. Pop. There we go. So. Here we go. The place that it all begun. Like I say. The first ever time that we launched into a brand new show. A brand new foray. Like this was... When, when I was being talked through the Magnus Archives in the first instance... I didn't even know how much of it was, how much of a horror podcast it was going to be. I did not know how far it was going to go. Um, like I say, the first talks that we had about the Magnus Archives happened, like, at one at the point that I was actually going to be cast as Tim. That's when I got brought in. So, bearing that in mind, what you're about to listen to is the first ever cut. I mean, this was actually even before I got brought on as an editor. For those of you who don't know the lore, I was actually the lead editor of the Magnus Archives from seasons, like, midway through season one, all the way through season two, and for a bit of season three as well. And then I actually trained all of our editors so that they can do what they do today. And in fact, now the editors that I trained, this is my only personal point of pride, the editors that I trained are now training or have trained their editing teams. So my knowledge has now been passed through two generations of editors when it comes to, um, when it comes to the Magnus Archives. Shall we take a listen? Here we go. That... That classic intro, that classic intro, this, this intro was actually built by a guy who I've come to know and love, uh, Sam, also known for me. Rusty Quill presents. Oh, shall I turn it down a bit? 
the Magnus Where Archive. are we? There we go. <clears throat> so Sam Sam the Music Man, as, he know, as I know him, is the person who conceived all of this stuff. We've actually done further work with Sam down the line. And I actually Episode helped him produce... Uh, well, I say I helped Angle him produce. We, we featured him as a part of our channel. If you actually go onto the Magnus Archive's full listen-through, the complete collection, then at the bottom of that list is actually an episode with Sam creating this music. Could I pull up the transcript, perhaps? That is going to be very, very difficult. The best I can do is closed captions, I'm afraid. Um, the, the very, very best I can do is closed captions, because otherwise there's going to be too much going on on the screen. <clears throat> Test, test, test. One, two, three. Right. <clears throat> my name is Jonathan Sims. Oh. I work for the Magnus Institute, London. Oh my god. Organ now, at this point, right, at this point, I can actually tell you something. Organization dedicated to While Johnny is, is chatting away, this tape the the deck Mr. that Elias you can hear, this, that we call it the tape deck, replace the previous this tape deck is one Gertrude actually... Robinson. Who has recently passed the away. same sound effect I've been working as a researcher at the Institute for that we have years used now, in every single episode subsequently. Most reach dead ends, predictably enough. Every single one, the all the way through to season five. Are, and I always emphasize there are very few genuine cases. Also, it's weird to listen to Johnny doing this voice because for those of you who are long term listeners, right? You'll probably know that between season one and where we are now, which is basically the end of season five, Johnny's performance has changed markedly. But you don't realize just how much it has changed until you listen to this, this episode. Because this is the one where we actually... Oh, Zalia, you champion. There we go. So if you want to have a read of the transcript, it is available. Um, Zalia's just posted a link to it. Thanks very much for that, Zalia. Big love to the mods. You saved me on the reg. Um, so, yeah, his, his performance has changed so much. And, like, it was only when I actually went back to these original episodes, which I found myself doing, like, a week ago, you hear the difference in his voice. Listen. List easy conclusions. When an investigation has gone as far as it can... Listen to how transferred to the emotionally removed now, he is. The Institute was founded in 1818, which means that the it's archive all fact. contains almost 200 years of case files. The whole lot. Point. Combine that with the fact that most of the Institute prefers the ivory tower of pure academia to the complicated work of dealing with statements or recent experiences, and you and have the cynical as well. an impeccably organized library and an absolute mess of an archive. So cynical and so sarcastic. It's like all of the emotion has been totally removed, and he's just barreling headlong into a new job. That's basically season one, John, right? It's basically season one, John, is this guy who got a job in a place that was a mess. Now, we haven't actually listened to the trailer for this because the trailer actually really sets the tone for a lot of this. But you can even hear the differences. Like, there are stylistic differences between Johnny in the trailer and Johnny in season one, episode one. Whereby, basically, like, in this episode here, in this first very episode... We we actually hear a slightly different version of John from the trailer. In so much as in the trailer, it was all sarcasm. Like, pretty much wall to wall. He was so blunt and so, so emotionally devoid. That actually changed a touch, just a little bit, moving into the first episode of the Magnus Archives and then subsequently, because of conversations that we had in the background about his character arc, about how he comes across. And so if you listen to episode one, then probably have a listen to episode 20 and then have a listen to episode 40, which is basically all of season one, you can then hear the actual changes that happened in real time. Now, that's something. This isn't necessarily a problem. Modern filing and indexing systems are a real wonder, and all it would need is a half-decent archivist to keep it in order. Gertrude Robinson was apparently <laughs> not Gertrude that Robinson. archivist. <laughs> From where I am sitting, I can- Now, fun fact. I don't know if you guys know this, but Gertrude Robinson is actually played by Johnny's mum. And there was a point when we were filming all of this files, stuff many... that I actually got to sit with Johnny, Johnny's mum and Johnny's dad, 
And we, and she's, uh, by the way, this is not, if you think this is going where you think this is going, it isn't. This isn't a slide at Johnny's mum. She's incredible. Like, she, the work that she does is unbelievable. And she really knows her stuff. But, like, the, <laughs> I, there was a weird point where I was sat in the studio with his mum and his dad. And I was talking about video production at the time. I was talking about video stuff. I wasn't even performing at the time. I have to go try to convince a dude to give me a job, but thank you for the stream <laughs> much hype. All right, Striker Flynn, you take care of yourself, dude. Great to have you here. Like, honestly... Sue, yeah, exactly. Sue Sims is is just is just wonderful as a person. But it was really surreal sitting in a studio with Johnny's entire family, and I was just there, like, I mean, I, I mean, I do stuff, <laughs> but yeah. Spread loosely around the place, others crushed into unmarked boxes. A few have dates on them or helpful labels, such as eighty-six ninety-one G slash H. Not Man. only that, but most of them appear to be handwritten. And now you realise this was all intentional. No accompanying digital or audio versions of any sort. Right. In fact, I believe the first computer to ever enter this room is the laptop that I brought in today. More importantly, it seems as though little of the actual actually there's a point. Have been so the laptop, right now, I don't know how many of you came to see the the live action um, version of the Magnus Archives. We actually did a live action performance of the Magnus Archives at the London Podcast Festival. And it was me, Alex, Johnny, and Hannah, and, and Lowry, the producer. And basically, like, all of us together, we did, like, a load of live action bits. He's just talked here about bringing in a laptop so that he can try and digitize some of the... Um, some of the like the records and try and make digital copies of them that is what we referenced in the live action show johnny actually brought a laptop in we had a laptop as a prop and um we actually managed to play out the scenes that sit in between episodes i think it was like episodes one to five or something like that been stored in the archives so the only thing in most of the files are the statements themselves it is going to take me a long, long time to organize this mess. I've managed to secure the services of two researchers to assist me. Well, technically three, but I don't count Martin as he's unlikely to contribute anything but delays. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know, hey? Little did he know at this point in the timeline. Wow. Wow. It all comes together when you go back, chat. Honestly, it does. It all comes together when you go back. Like, this is... In the beginning, like, we didn't actually... We didn't actually know a lot about where the characters were going to go. Johnny did, and I'm fairly certain Alex did. But as a performer, I had no idea. I only knew that there was scope for other researchers to be involved with this and that's actually where the casting call came from for me like this this actually came from a conversation between me and alex where we were talking about um well the the story goes that apparently alex was talking to johnny one day and he then turned around and was like so we need a character who's quite happy-go-lucky and is like able to like jump on uh, jump on a few lines um and he's, he's got to be very energetic um, and and is Mike available? Can we can we get Mike on the phone? <laughs> um, I think it was around the time that they cast um, Alex as Martin, and we cast um, Lottie as Sasha. Like because Lottie Broomhall, bless her, Lottie has like such an arc in this, and uh, like I loved performing with her. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But genuinely, this was, it was one of those casting calls. I'd never really had that many before. And uh, they literally just said to me, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I put my all into it from that point. I plan to digitize we the all files did, as much as possible to be fair. and record audio versions, though some will have to be on tape recorder, as my attempts to get them on my laptop have met with significant audio distortions i wonder why alongside huh? this chat tim Sash, i wonder and, yes, why i suppose martin will be doing some supplementary investigation to see what details may be missing 
from what we have. I'll try to present these in as succinct a fashion as I can at the end of each statement. I can unfortunately promise no order in regards to date or theme of the statements that are recorded, and can only apologize to any future researcher attempting to use these files for their own investigations. God, I can't even begin to tell you, chat. You, you guys must be feeling this as well, right? But I can't even begin to tell you how much nostalgia I'm getting. Like, this takes me back to the days when the first few episodes of this that we actually recorded, as far as I remember, we recorded between, like, pieces of chairs. Like, pieces of chairs. Like, we had two chairs next to us with sofa cushions either side to catch the sound. And we had a, a blanket over the top. Basically, it was like a pillow fort, fundamentally. Except it was a pillow fort with very high-fidelity microphones in it, um, which was incredible. Um, so, like, yeah, there's there's so much that sits behind this. The yurt, that was the yurt. That was, in fact, the recording yurt chat. That's what I'm talking about. The get out of my archives clip because John had to be mean to Martin because he didn't know he liked him. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's there are all the feels coming at chat. Don't you worry about that. We couldn't afford the whole chair. Yeah, I know. If we were on that lower budget at the time, that this is just how it went. Not very nostalgic because I got into TMA during quarantine. That's fair enough and unremarkable, nerd. Don't you worry about that. I'm just drinking it in. Um, be it cards on the table, I am drinking it in. Like, there was... There is so much. There is so much here that I could talk you through. But that's how it begun. Sat on the floor, recording underneath a blanket, between two pillows, between bits of chairs, uh, in a flat that eventually got burnt down. <laughs> well, no, it didn't get burnt down, I don't think. It didn't get burnt down. It, there was a big old story behind that. But I'll talk you through that a little bit later on, probably. That's probably I think I only went there like three times. Excuses for the state of this place. Maybe four. And I suppose we have to begin somewhere. The asbestos gremlins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Statement asbestos. of Nathan Watts. Regarding an encounter. <gasps> the first ever statement, chat! The first ever statement! Statement of Nathan Watts! Oh my god, I can't even begin to tell you. I cannot even begin to tell you how many times I listened to this episode. I was so excited about the Magnus Archives kicking off. I listened to this episode like five times back in the day. Like five or six. I just uh, had it on repeat. Um, although, like, in, in the background of all of this, like, we were editing frantically to try and meet deadlines. Honestly, this is, this is ridiculous. In the background of this being produced, right, we were still producing, when this dropped, I think we were still producing episodes 3, 4, and 5. Because at that point, we were changing over editors. Like, I was actually coming on as an editing staff member, and someone was coming off. Because they were going elsewhere. And... We literally were just frantically in the background while this was airing. We're like, oh my god, we need to we need to get all the soundscaping done. And we we need to pull in this, this, and this, and we need to like build this in and we need to do this and oh my god, are we gonna do this? Like there are some decisions that were made from episode like from episode five onwards. Can I tell you this? Am I allowed to? I don't even know if I am. Chat, do you promise that you're not gonna tell Alex if I tell you a secret? Do you promise that you're not gonna you have to promise? Chat, you have to, you have to promise. Yeah, we'll tell the secret. You have to promise. Say I promise, and then we'll go. You promise. Yeah? You promising, chat? Okay, all right, fine. There was an Easter egg that we built in to the original episodes of the Magnus Archives, the original ones, whereby whenever John or someone was using their powers, there would be this high-pitched whine. Yeah, this high-pitched sound. Now, you'll notice this in episodes like... I think it was in like the first 10 episodes. Um, <clears throat> and so... But lucky, if you tell on me. Okay, so help me God. Like, yeah, not, not the static. No, not the static necessarily, but a high-pitched whine as well that accompanied the static. Now, that was later removed, and that effect was only then used for one character, and that was Michael Crew. Because we actually took the same effect from, from that that signified that someone was doing something, and we weren't going to say what it was, and we then applied that to Michael Crew further down the line. You'll notice that it changes. 
Like, I think now I've pointed it out, you'll probably see it. Um, but there are only a few characters that actually have that trope now. And this was going to be a big reveal. Like, this was going to be a big reveal in Season 2, I think it was, where, you know, we were going to talk through, like, what was going on. But we decided in the background that it wasn't where we wanted to go. We got a whole load of new music made for the Magnus Archives to accompany Season 2. And that meant that our editing capacity went from, like, here to here. Um, so we had a lot more scope to do some bigger, better things. And that's exactly what we ended up doing. Do you hear it in Anglerfish? I can't remember. If we do, I'll point it out to you, okay? On Old Fish Market <laughs> Close. But that was Edinburgh. a thing. Original statement given April 22nd, 2012. Audio recording by Jonathan Sims, head archivist Anyone of the Magnus tells Institute. Anyone Father Alex Sluice's kneecap privileges. Statement begins. <laughs> This all happened a couple of years <laughs> thank ago. You, so thank you, Eva Rose Games for 100 the details bits. Are a bit off. I mean... Sorry. I, I just talked over the most iconic first line. Hold the phone, chat. We're going back. Statement begins. Tute. London. Statement begins. And that... That one line was the beginning of a whole new adventure. And who knew it, chat? Who knew that that one line was the beginning of what has to come, what has come later? You know? Who knew that that one, that one line was going to be one of the most iconic lines of the entire series? Who knew? Like, you, you, when you write this stuff, I don't think you can know. Maybe Johnny knew. Johnny Johnny is the writer of all of this, and maybe he did. But me, no. Not a clue. This all happened a couple of years ago. And there's the first tonal shift. Now, you can hear in this the stage direction, where Johnny actually switches from being John, the archivist, to a character here. Thanks, Crunchy. Great work. Um to a character and you hear that tonal shift and it was so much easier to hear because this is the way that John performed in season one. You you lose it a little bit in the later seasons because Johnny gains a lot more emotion and he, he like as a character, sorry, John gains a lot more emotion and you're able to he's able to articulate it better. Not to say that he doesn't do it very, very well, because he absolutely does, but you can hear it here so much more stark. It's like someone's turned the contrast up and stuck an insta filter on it. There's no CP in here though this is all johnny's talent so i apologize if some of the details are a bit off i mean i feel like i remember it clearly but sometimes things are so weird that you start to doubt yourself still i suppose weird is kind of what you guys do right weird so is I'm what studying we do at the university of edinburgh <laughs> biochemistry specifically and not just I like in my not just in the magnus archives but in arcy streams I wasn't in any sort of university accommodation at this point and was renting a student flat down in Southside with a few other second years. Actually, there's a point. By the way, if you're new here, remember to hit the follow button if you want to see more stuff like this, because I would love to do something like this again. To be honest, I didn't hang out with them much. I took a gap year before matriculating and my birthday's in the wrong part of September, so I was nearly two years old than most of my peers when I started my course. I got on with them fine, you understand, but I tended to end up hanging out with some of the older students. That's why I was at the party in the first place. Michael McCauley. Oh my god, I've just realized something as well. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to go I'm going to go back, okay, chat. I'm going to go back and I'm going to point something out to you where if you listen to this episode, right? I almost promise you. I want to go on a tour of the UK when we can and visit where all the statesmen are from. Also, John's a theatre kid. That would be epic, J. Adams 2002. That would be awesome. Right, I'm going to go back, okay? I'm going to go back and I'm going to play that line again. And I'm going to point something out to you that you will only notice by listening to episode one of season four, I reckon. Right, are you ready? We're going back. The time this happened. Listen very carefully. I wasn't in any sort of university accommodation at this point and was renting a student flat down in Southside with a few other second years. To be honest, I didn't hang out with them much. I took a gap year before matriculating and my birthday's in the wrong part of September, so I was nearly two years older than most of my peers when I started my course. I got... Now. Now. 
I don't know if this is going to blow your mind. Now. In this statement, in season one, an editing decision that we made basically meant that... We're, oops, the captions. Oh, yeah, like the captions will be all over the place. We're in this In this episode, an editing decision that we made basically meant that we cut out at the end of every sentence the breathing noises to breathe back in before the next line. Listen. Magnus Institute, London. Where was the breath? It was cut. Statement begin. No breath again. This all happened a couple of years. No breath again. Years ago, so I apologize if some of the details are a bit off. I mean... One there. That's one breath. That was left in. I feel like I remember it clearly, but sometimes things are so weird that you start to doubt yourself. Gone. See? No breath again. Now, if you listen to season four, we changed the way that we edit to leave those breaths back in again. We actually put a lot more of what Alex calls the breath work back in to the show. And it wasn't that it wasn't there. I've got to dip out early to go get vaccinated <laughs> of some bits three. Nice! Ah, oh, because you can well done getting vaccinated! Good work! Woo woo! Good work, you. Good flipping work. Um, I'm proud of you. <clears throat> so, so later in the seasons, right? Later in the seasons, you then hear the breathing in more before the next line. And the reason for that was because, basically because we decided to cut them all out. Now, this only really happened, I think, until the middle of the way through season two. The reason why I'm telling you to go to season four is because the difference will be much more stark. You know what I was talking about turning that contrast up? That's where you're going to hear it, is in the later seasons. So... Have a listen to this again, and have a listen to season four, and you will hear the difference. And we're actually going to be dipping into some of those later episodes, uh, later. Still, I suppose weird is kind of what you guys do, right? So I'm studying at the University of Edinburgh, biochemistry specifically, and I was in my second year at the time this happened. I wasn't in any sort of university accommodation at this point, and was renting a student flat down in Southside with a few other second years. To be honest, I didn't hang out with them much. I took a gap year before matriculating and my birthday's in the wrong part of September, so I was nearly two years older than most of my peers when I started my course. I got on with- And there it is again. That's another prime example of the fact that you can't actually hear the breath. And now, a little editing trick that we use, one of the reasons why it's so good to use tape decks or one of the reasons why it's it's really, really good to use effects over the top of things is because it masks the imperfections. I actually think I heard something here that was missed. Hold on. I took a gap year before matriculating and my birthday's in the wrong part of September, so I was nearly two years older than most of my peers when I started my course. I got a Yeah, so you can hear the s sound at the end of course, but it cuts a little bit. And that's, and that's super interesting, like, because the the tape deck just, uh, like, casts over the top of it, and you can't hear what's going on in the background. Thank you very much for the, for the one month. We've got a new subscriber! <laughs> oh my god, welcome! Welcome to the channel! Welcome to RQ Streams! Oh my goodness. So yeah, like, using that sort of stuff basically means that we end up, um... You, you end up not necessarily uh, having, well, I mean, we tried to be as perfect as we could, but you always know you have a safety net. Fine, you understand, but I tended to end up hanging out with some of the older students. That's why I was at the party in the first place. Season Michael four, McCauley, a good turn friend of breathing mine, privileges. just been accepted really to did, our Jipper. Thank Science you very much for the 100 bits. The celebration was in order. Well, maybe party isn't quite the right word. We just kind of invaded oh, the Jipper, Alps. 12 months, a 12 month sub. Welcome back. Oh my God, you've earned your yellow cow. Congratulations. Back down on the Royal Mile and drank long enough and loud enough that eventually we had the back area to ourselves. Now, I don't know how well you know the drinking holes of Edinburgh, but the Albanac has a wide selection of some excellent single malt. <gasps> Astronaut 01, we've got another new subscriber chat! <laughs> yeah! Welcome! Welcome, Astronaut 01. Great to have you here. 
and I may have slightly overindulged. I have vague memories of Mike suggesting I slow down. Uh, uh, excuse me? Indulged. I have vague memories of Mike suggesting I slow down. Uh, uh, excuse me? A wide selection of some excellent I have to head out, but a fun and I may have slightly overindulged. I have vague memories of Mike suggesting I slow down. Is that another Mike? Is that another Mike in the Magnus archives? I had forgotten about that. I ha I had forgotten about that. Wow, that's another Michael in the Magnus archives. <laughs> Man, I went from not meeting any Mikes to being surrounded by them real quick, huh? To which I responded by roundly swearing at him for failing to properly celebrate his own good news, or words to that effect. Long story short, I was violently ill around midnight and made the decision to walk the route home. It wasn't far to my flat, maybe it's just half all the way an hour down. if I'd been sober. And the night was cool enough that I remember having a hope that the chill would perk me up some. Hello, Anil. I headed for the cow gate, and the quickest way to get there from the Royal Mile is down Old Fish Market close. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that there are some steep... Mm. And this is the first time that you hear music in the Magnus Archives. Now, this music, right? This music that was produced. When season one happened, we actually only had two pieces of music that were used through the entirety of season one. Literally, all of the music that you hear in season one are these two tracks. And now, looking back on it, that's incredible that two pieces of music can take you through 40 episodes of a podcast. They were produced exquisitely by Sam Sam the Music Man. And basically, like, whenever I go back and listen to these, I get such an immense sense of nostalgia. I learned so much about editing from basically editing this music because I had to do so many things to it to be able to, like, to make it seem like we had different tracks. Like, we would pitch bend it, we would speed it up, we would slow it down, we would pole stretch it. We would do so many things to this music to make it sound different. But because the budget we had was like this, we never really had enough to be able to, like, to be able to spend on better music. So we had to use what we had. Hello, Mike and chat. This is my first time here. Really glad I could make it. I hope you guys are doing well. I am uh, not quite the Chrome. Thank you very much for joining us. It's great to have you here. Um, you're actually tuned into a special, a Magnus Archive special. So we're just doing a little listen along. You're more than welcome to chill out with us. Grab yourself a nice cup of tea. Sit on by and we'll chat about some of this stuff. It's going to be great. Um. I headed for the Cowgate, and the quickest way don't need me to tell you that there are some steep hills in Edinburgh, but Old Fish and Market listen, close is exceptional. Listen to how gently like it standards. comes in as well. At times it must reach a 30 or 40 degree angle, which is hard enough to navigate when you don't have that much scotch inside you. Listen as to how I gently it comes in, had that music intro. Lot, so it probably wasn't that surprising when I took a rather nasty tumble about halfway down the street. In retrospect, the fall wasn't that bad compared to what it could you have been. You hardly even notice it, it really shook me up until it's there. With some nasty bruises. I picked myself up as best I could, checked I hadn't seriously injured myself, no broken bones or anything, and decided to roll a cigarette to calm myself. That was when I heard it. Can I have a cigarette? There! Did you hear it? Did you hear it, chat? That was it. That was what I was talking to you about before. Can I have a cigarette? That signified that someone was using a power and we took that out. In the middle of season one, we took that out. Listen to it again. Or anything, I decided to roll a cigarette to calm myself. That was when I heard it. Can I have a cigarette? There. Now. <laughs> 
So if you're new and you, you didn't hear me at the beginning, but this was a sound effect that we added in, a very subtle sound effect to imply that someone was using a power. And the big reveal was going to be uh, somewhere down the line that you would then listen back to all of these episodes and hear that sound effect. I remember editing this bad boy in, not for this episode, but for like later episodes when I picked up as the lead editor. Like, I remember having to use that sound effect over and over again, like in various different episodes for various different people. And that is how the fears were established. That's, that is how the fears were originally going to be built into the entire show. I was startled out of my thoughts by the words as I thought I had been alone. Quickly trying to compose myself and looking around, I noticed a small... And you'll notice the music ducks now. The opposite side of the street. Can it you hear it? narrow and completely... Music's unlit, ducking. With a short staircase leading up. I could see a light fixture a little way up the wall at its entrance, but it either wasn't working or wasn't turned on. Gone. Meaning that beyond a few steps, much. the alley was shrouded in total darkness. Stood there, a couple of stairs from the street, was a figure... It was hard to tell much about them as they were mostly in the shadows, though if I had to guess I would have said the voice sounded male. Yeah, so someone said the audio is compressing through uh, Twitch. You're absolutely right. You might not be able to hear it entirely. Watch this back in the VOD on YouTube because that's recorded direct from source, so you might be able to hear it a bit more clearly there. But certainly stick around because there's plenty more to discover. They seemed to sway ever so slightly as I watched, and I assumed that they, like me, were probably a little bit drunk. And the music's back again. Can you hear that? Hey, we've got another new subscriber. Hey, thank you very much for subscribing at tier one. Um, Sue Su Ro Su Su Welcome to the channel. It's great to have you. I lit my own cigarette and held out my tobacco towards them, though I didn't approach, and asked if they were okay with a roll-up. The figure didn't move, except to continue that gentle swaying. Writing it down now, it seems so obvious that something was wrong. If I hadn't been so drunk, maybe I'd have noticed quicker, but... even Now when the music's back again, can you hear that? Again, can I have a cigarette? And there's Actually, the static again, but that time a lot more subtly. The first time, I remember, I, I think I remember us having a chat about this. The first time was very overt. The second time was a lot, a lot, lot, lot more subtle. And from that point onwards, it became a lot more subtle. Look, I'll play it again. I'm going to turn the volume up, okay? So brace yourselves if you've got your headphones on. I'm going to play it again. Just listen. Yeah? And the stranger asked the question again. Can I have a cigarette? Utterly without internet. Did you hear it? Did you hear it that time? That that sound effect. I can't believe we, I can't believe we took that out. Like genuinely, that's uh yeah, it is definitely there, right? Now that I ah oh my god, I I genuinely am getting the warm fuzzies from all Nation. of this. Still, I didn't understand why I was so uneasy. I stared at the stranger, and as my eyes began to adjust, I could make out more details. I could see that their face appeared blank, expressionless and their skin seemed damp and slightly sunken, like they had a bad fever. The swaying was more pronounced now, seeming to move from the waist, side to side, back and forth. God, I remember this. By this point I had finished rolling a second cigarette and gingerly held it out towards them, but I didn't get any closer. Thanks very much for the resub, dude. I decided that if this weirdo wanted a cigarette, they were going to need to come out of the creepy alleyway. They didn't come closer, didn't make any movement at all except for that damn swaying mm -hmm. for some reason the thought and there's of the music again into my head. now so one of the big things that you'll notice through the entirety of the magnus archives is actually the way that the way that our editors use music like the fact that we had to dip it duck it and dive it like all over the place in season one it's so different from season two three and four like you you will you'll notice a, ch a marked change when we go to episode 97 because that's season two and that will be that will be a lot to it will be a lot different the single point of light dangled into the darkness hey we got a new subscriber <laughs> mads and clock thank you very much for the one month tier one sub goodness me thing that lures you in 
Can I have a cigarette? It spoke again in the same flat voice, and I realized exactly what was wrong. Its mouth was closed, had been the whole time. Whatever was repeating that question, it wasn't the figure in the alleyway. I looked at oh, their feet. The atmosphere. And saw that they weren't quite touching the ground. Oh, and that, and that Stra pulse, that music pulse. Like I said, we only had one piece of music to work with, one for this episode, because we agreed that once you start using a piece of music in an episode, you then stick with that music through the entirety of the episode. You don't change. So we couldn't actually use the other one. So the music pulse that happened there was all about timing on the editing side, and that little bump and saw that they weren't quite touching the ground. That little bump would have been timed over and over and over again. The stranger's form was being lifted ever so slightly and moved gently from side to side. I dropped the cigarette and growled for my phone trying to turn on the torch. I don't know why I didn't run or what I hoped to see in that alley, but I wanted to get a better look. As soon as I took out my phone, the figure disappeared. It sort of folded at the waist and vanished back into the darkness, as if a string had gone taut and pulled it back. I turned on the torch and stared into the alley, but I saw nothing. Just silence and darkness. We have a new subscriber! I staggered back Woo! up to the Royal Mile. Tokyo One we Nico, welcome! Welcome to the channel! The Lonely Desolation, welcome to the channel! Thank you for subscribing with Twitch I slept Prime! Late the next day. I'd made sure I didn't have any lectures or classes as I had Just intended to be sleeping off Thanks a heavy night of drinking, sub. which I guess I was. Preview over. Thank you very much for the sub. Welcome to the channel. Playing in my mind. And so, after making my way through two liters of water, some painkillers, and a very greasy breakfast, I felt human enough to leave my flat and go to investigate the place in daylight. Now, there's something in this that I don't know whether would be preached if I pointed out, but I preach it, so I'm going to tell you anyway. Which is that, listen to the quality of the audio in this. It's very heavily distorted by a lo-fi effect that we apply to make it sound like everything is on a tape, right? But listen to... When we get to the next episode, which is in Season 2, listen to the difference in the audio tone. Because, it, again, it is marked. It is a marked difference. The result was unenlightening. There were no marks. No music's gone. Blood stains. Do you notice? Indicate that the swing as soon as the bad guy's gone, music's gone. It's gone, Zo. Like the Muppets, the only thing it's I done. Find was an unsmoked Marlboro red cigarette lying just below the burned out light fixture. And there it is again. When the cigarette comes back, the music comes back. And that was one of the founding principles that we ended up, like, perpetuating through a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, uh, seasons one and two. Uh, and I think, th I think through to season three as well. Beyond that, I didn't really know what to do. I did as much research as I could on the place, but couldn't find anyone who'd had any experience similar to mine. And there didn't seem to be any folklore or urban legends I could find out about old fish markets. Thanks for close. giving the transcript again, Z. A few Z. friends I told about what happened just assumed I'd been accosted by some stranger, and the alcohol had made it seem much weirder than it was. I tried to explain that I'd never had hallucinations while drunk, and that there was no way this guy had just been a normal person. Music's gone. But they always gave me one of those looks, halfway between... Totally this time. It's not even sat up. there ticking away in I the background. It's gone. I never did find out anything else about it. But a few days and later, then it I comes some back. Missing person appeals go up around Now, camp. now again. See, oh my God! When he starts talking about missing people, bang! There's the music again, and you wouldn't even notice it come in. You wouldn't even know it was there. Like, oh my God! Bah! Ah! Da! Bah! Bah! Oh my Lord! Sorry. <clears throat> Another student had disappeared. John Fellows, his name was, though I didn't really know the guy and couldn't tell you much about him, except for two things that struck me as very important. He had been at that same party and, as far as I remembered, had still been there when I left. The other was just that, well, 
on the photo they'd used for his missing persons appeal. Ashart, thank you very much for the notice. for the nine months. There up. was a pack of Marlboro Big red fish. cigarettes. Thank you for the bits as well. Dean J.K. Smith. I haven't quit smoking, thank but I do find that sub I get a lot more taxis now. But I find myself out too late. Statement ends. Statement ends, and where's the music? It is out of there, because that's how we signified back in the day that a statement was done. We took the music and it was gone. We actually had so many editing conversations about when music should, should start and when music should end, and we all decided back in the day that the music always ended when the statement ended because that way you had a clean cut distinction between the two but chat and this is going to potentially blow your mind there are some episodes there are some episodes where the music starts to trickle into the real world and I'm not going to tell you which ones those are. You're going to have to find out for yourself. But there are some episodes where the music starts to creep into the real world after the tape is done. Why do you think that is? I'll leave that for you. The investigation at the time and the follow-up we've done over the last couple of days have found no evidence to corroborate Mr. Watt's account of his experience. I was initially inclined to read the quite statement the in the discredited of the way I'm with you. section of the archive, of the way. a new category I've created that will, I suspect, be housing the majority of these files. However, Sasha did some digging into the police Sasha. reports at the time, and it turns out Sasha. that between 2005 and 2010, <laughs> when Mr. Watson after that scene, I can't say it place, any other way. Sasha. There were six disappearances <laughs> in and around the old fish market close. Jessica McEwen in November 2005, Sarah Baldwin in August 2006, Daniel Rawlings in December of the same year, then Ashley Dobson and Megan Shaw in May and June of 2008. Then finally, as Mr. Watts mentioned, John Fellows in March 2010. All six disappearances oh, remain unsolved. Baldwin and Shaw yeah. were definitely smoking. Yeah, Sarah Baldwin no was mentioned way in this others. first episode, am I right? Ashart 101? Sasha did find one other thing. And Daniel Rawlings, in true. Ashley Your enthusiasm Dobson. brings us so much joy. Thank the last you for making the world brighter by her three. Phone. Oh, McRiley, thank you very Shalom. much. I appreciate that so hard. The thank you for the 100 bits as well. Check out this drunk creeper, LOL. <laughs> Oh my god, can I have that as my ringtone? I forgot about that. Check out this drunk creeper, LOL. Half <laughs> taken by can her. We, can we just do that one more time? Phone and sent to her sister, Siobhan. <laughs> the caption was Check out this drunk creeper, LOL. If there isn't a Minecraft video that is titled that, someone better get on that right now. Write the flip now. Someone better go out, make a Minecraft video, and call it that. But the picture is of a darkened, apparently empty alleyway, with stairs leading up into it. It appears to be the same alleyway which Mr. Watts described in his statement, the one that, according to maps of the area, leads to Tron Square. But there doesn't seem to be anyone in the photograph at all. Sasha took the liberty of running it through some editing programs, though, and increasing the contrast appears to reveal the outline of a long, thin hand, roughly at what would be waist level on a male of average height. What did I tell you? I find it oddly hard to shake what off the impression. What did I tell you, chat? There's the music again. That it's beckoning. End recording. And it's gone. It wasn't even a full piece of music. It was just a stinger. Cut and print. Cut and print, everyone. Roll credits. Roll credits. That was... That was... 
Oh. The Magnus Archives is a podcast distributed by oh RustyQuill.com. Oh my god, it gives you all of the warm fuzzies, done it. Oh my god, the real god of mischief. Thank you very much for the one month. Tier one was sub. By oh, we've Simmons. got a new person it here. It was produced and directed oh. by Alexander J. Newell. By Alexander Jane to you, that glorious person. I've I've never ever known anyone quite as as fastidious an editor as Alexander Jane to you. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes, visit us on Facebook, tweet us on Twitter at the Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Thanks for listening. Oh my god, is this what opens at the end? Archie streams? Could this be? <laughs> well, chat. Well. Do you like the flash at the end? Do you like the do you like the little flashies at the end? Has anyone ever noticed that before? Probably not. The little flash of the logo? Bam, bam, bam. That was me. I built that. <coughs> All of that. I built that. Way back in the day, I built that. Um <clears throat> So chat. So chat. That was episode one of the Magnus Archives. Now, how do we feel? How do we feel? Because I thought that was a lot of fun. And I hope that you're enjoying this over-the-top, um, like, commentary that I'm giving. Like, I think that... I think this is a lot of fun. That was the end of the first episode, right? So we're going to do another one now. We've got... Um, like I said, we've got four episodes... And then you guys get to choose what you guys would like to see. So if you would like to vote for an episode, Crunchy is actually keeping a record of what people are suggesting. So do make sure that you suggest stuff. All right? Please make sure that you do. Now, so that was episode one. Um, and that was the beginning of a, of a new empire, a new way of doing things, a new, an entirely new thing. An entirely new thing that we had no idea where it was going to go. The next one that we are going to watch, the next one that we are going to watch is episode 97. So, episode 97. Wow, the real god of mischief. Thank you very much for the five tier one community gift subs. Goodness me. The next one that we are going to watch is episode 97, We All Ignore the Pit. Which, yes, as uh, Lissy1313 has quite rightly pointed out, this is the first time that we meet Jane Prentice, I think. And also, I think it's... A, no, wait, is this the first time that we... No, this isn't the first time we meet Jane Prentice. I think this is the first time we meet Nikola Orsonov. This is the episode that spawned a meme that no one ever saw coming. <laughs> My nemesis. Tim's nemesis. The the one who we don't talk about in this fucking household. We don't talk about her because she ruined my life. Um, that one. Um, very, very angry towards her is Tim. So, here we go. I didn't swear. I didn't say anything. So, chat. Let's listen. Now, remember what I told you in the previous episode. Remember what I told you in the previous episode. Listen to those marked changes in the audio, because they are coming. They are coming, chat, and you just wait. Also, this smoke effect. I made this too. Do you like that? I made that. Well, I didn't make all of it. I, I used an editor. <laughs> Became a benchmark. You know? Became a little, a little benchmark. Rusty Quill presents the Magnus Arc. Oh wow, Fear and Ramen, thank you very much for the five tier one community gift subs. Dean JK Smith, thanks for the 50 bits. And Katho, thank you very much for the eight month sub with Twitch Prime. Goodness me. Episode 97 We All Ignore the Pit. We all ignore the pit. 
So by this time, I was like, well, I was balls deep in editing for the Magnus Archives. At this point, I was the established lead editor. I was training the other editors uh, that I was responsible for at the time. And this was around the time when you can actually start to hear a lot of the different, um, a lot of the different things. That's uh, like the different themes that start to come in. Season two ushered in an entirely new wave of new ideas, new ways of doing things. And that's just from the editing side. That's before you even start talking about the um, the storyline. Because, of course, the storyline took a lot of twists and turns through season two. Now, one of the pieces of lore I can give you about Tim, if you're interested, is that I actually knew, right, when I took the job as playing Tim, I knew when Tim was going to die. I actually knew from that day that that was when my number was up. So by the time we got to this episode, I pretty much knew the way the wind was blowing. Like, I knew, I had an idea of where things were starting to go. I knew. Yes, chat, I knew. I did know. I knew the entire time, and I I had to keep that to... I had to keep that a secret. Um, Like, I had to keep that a secret from everyone, because if, if that let slip, it would have ruined one of the big uh, the big season finales. Um, But yeah, no, I, I knew. I knew. ...of Jackson Ellis regarding the geograph... Now listen to that difference in audio tone. Listen to that difference in quality. This is when we had studios. This is when we had proper soundproofing. This is when we had tables to perform around. Oh my lord. ...graphical oddities in the town of Bacoda, Washington. Oh yeah, sorry Pukali, you're quite right. Yeah, Tim isn't dead, he's just kayaking. He's just kayaking with Peter Lucas. That's what the most recent drop on YouTube showed. You know, the one where me and... Uh, me and Alistair Stewart, or Tim and Peter Lucas, were sort of doing some of our reading um, for the RQGG bonus stuff. You can go check that out on our YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Rusty Quill. That's what we're watching right now. Here we go. Original statement given 3rd March 2009. Audio recording by Jonathan Sims, head archivist of the Magnus Institute, London. Statement begins. Listen to that quality difference. Last year I moved to the small town of Bacoda. About now, can you hear what I mean about the character changes, by the way? Can you, can you hear what I mean about the character changes? In the first episode, because of the way Johnny played Johnny Sims, like, we actually, you can sort of hear, oh, the, sorry, yeah, the closed captions. Um, sorry, chat, there we go. So you can hear the difference. In the first episode, it was so contrasted. It was like this, right? By this episode, it was closer. And again, that's not a slide against Johnny. Like, his performance was incredible throughout. But, like, you can feel, you can feel the difference between the two. Like, in your heart, right? Marabou Blade, thank you very much for subscribing with Twitch Prime. And Bone Marrow Drinker, thank you very much for the follow. You, you you can feel it, the difference. It's visceral, right? About 15 miles outside of Olympia in the state of Washington. And listen to the speed change as well. Listen to the... The first episode was very slow, very building, guiding you through the story. By this point, you can hear that John, as the archivist, is just starting to get into the flow of recording each one on the little tapey thing. Click. So, like... At this point, you can actually feel the character arc start to develop. You can feel him speeding up as a character because, of course, by this point, you know, he'd been in the archives for a fair old while and he'd been used to recording episodes and statements like this. So it makes sense that the episodes would be faster. I'd never heard of the town before and I certainly had no idea about what I would soon start to think of as the pit. The choice to move was not entirely mine, as my circumstances had driven me into a very particular situation. I'd moved out to Olympia from Pittsburgh to pursue what appeared to be a very promising job as a correspondent for a regional newspaper. There weren't a lot of opportunities in my field, so when I was offered the position in Olympia, I had used all of my savings. Now, did you hear that breath that was left in there as well, chat? So you can start to see when the editing decisions were made about how we handled the content. To make the move. I never got the Again, full at the end of the line, you can hear him visibly, or like viscerally go, oh, like as if he's sort of, you know, trying to get it off his chest rather than it just being a statement. Story on why the paper closed down so quickly. 
One person told me they'd gone bankrupt due to embezzlement at a high level, another claimed there was a huge libel suit and they'd lost it badly, and a third said the decision had been made by their parent company without warning. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I find that interesting. Isn't that interesting, though? Whatever the reason, I turned up to my first day of work to find the office halfway through being disassembled. I hadn't technically started my job yet, so there was no redundancy or severance. I was just stranded in Olympia, with no money and no obvious place to go. It didn't help matters that my new landlord proved entirely unsympathetic to my situation, since even if I got a new job immediately, I'd be unable to make the next rent payment on the rather overpriced apartment in the city centre. I, have I ever told you guys that I love, um, what, what are they called? Plusives? Plusives? Something like that. The sound, that little uh, p sound, you know, that people make at the end of sentences. You'll notice that Johnny, in this episode, he starts to come into his own. Plosives, that's it, yeah. Like, with Johnny, one of the things that you notice at this point is when he ends a sentence, when he ends a word that has the letter T in it, you get this real t sound t at the very end of it, and you, you... The way that he does it, it sounds really weird now, I feel kind of bad, but the way that he does it, I love it. I love it. Just listen. Just listen, and you'll notice this more now. With no money and no obvious place to go. It didn't help matters that my new landlord proved entirely unsympathetic to my situation. Ready? Since even if I got a new job immediately, I'd be unable to make the next rent payment on the rather overpriced apartment in the city centre. Rent payment. Apartment. You, at the end of every one, it's so precise. It's so precise. It's like a little snap right at the end of the word. And, like, you'll start to notice this more and more as you listen to the Magnus Archives back after this, probably. But it is so sharp. And it's one of the reasons why I actually, I love the way that Johnny speaks, genuinely. Um, I, I am a bit of a fanboy, to be fair. Um, but, like, this is, this is stunning. Rent payment. Every time he hits it, listen. He told me I was in breach of contract and was to be evicted. Evicted. T -t every time. Every time. He gave me three days. I mean, yeah, aren't we all fanboys? I mean, we're all fan people, am I right? We all are. That's why we're here, ultimately, is because we're all fans of the show. I just perform in it. That's the only difference, really. Otherwise, I'm with you guys. Like, I get stupidly nerdy about this stuff sometimes. So, I ended up in a place where I desperately needed to find somewhere very cheap to live very quickly. Somewhere I could stay while I looked for another job. My parents were dirt poor themselves and couldn't help. I mean, I'm sure they'd have taken me back in, but I didn't have the money to travel across half the country. Now listen for when the music comes in, see if you can spot it. Especially not with all my stuff. You never realise how many possessions you have until you find them weighing you down or how little value most of them have to anyone but you. I bet you none of you will spot it, and I bet you it's not even because of the Twitch compression. I sold what I could, but I got less than $50, and I barely got rid of anything. So when I got chatting to Tar, two days before I was getting kicked out, and he told me he had a spare room he was looking to rent out on the- Fenris 6070 has caught me out. Yeah. It's actually already there. The cheap. I said yes almost before he'd given me any details about it. Thomas Krychek was young, blandly handsome, and not- It was actually there the entire time. It was actually there the- the entire time. Not desperately bright. He seemed like a good sort, though. He'd bought a small one-story home in the town of Bakoda with his partner a few years ago, but she'd split a month or two before, and now he was struggling to keep up the payments on the house. Now- this is one of the things that marked a difference in season two was the fact that we were able to be able we were able to actually get new music and so at the beginning of season two we actually had rather than having music tracks like an entire track we actually had several tones i think there were like six tones that we had available to us there was a bass rumble there was like a really low growl there was like a really high treble there were two really high treble tracks and a couple of mids and basically what we started to be able to do was actually build our own music using these tracks we could literally build in like sways and swelling we could build in like a boom boom 
boom in the background if we wanted to like we actually could do those things and we had so much fun doing it like as an editing team it was really fun to be able to because i'm not a composer nico's a composer go watch him on wednesdays if you want to hear me hear how much uh, shiola i'm talking but this was my way of being able to engage with that world to be able to engage with the world of composition where i could get a list of tracks which all worked together and then just play around with the sounds and just muck about with them to be able to try and like thanks pokemon and pancakes to to be able to like just get a different feel because ultimately as an editor that's what you're trying to do you're trying to build a feeling and that's exactly what we did here keep listening it wasn't much, but it fit what might generously be called my budget, and Bakoda was less than an hour's drive from Olympia, so commuting into any job I might actually get wouldn't be too bad. I shook his hand, and, and the music's gone, and you didn't, and you didn't even know it was there. <sighs> That's the glory of editing, people. That's the glory of editing. And I moved there. The town was almost exactly what you would expect. A small grid without traffic signs or markings, patches of grass and dirt with small houses irregularly dotted about. What infrastructure there was boasted only volunteers, and I'd be surprised if there was more than 500 people in total who called it home. And now you can hear it again, can't you? Yeah, you can hear it now. Stitch Witch Sarah has got it. Now it's back because we're now talking about the place that we're gonna go where the bad thing is gonna happen so the music comes back to verbally or to, sorry to to signify in an auditory way that something bad is gonna happen now now it needs to be present because as an editor we're basically telling you run now <laughs> The forest pressed in on all sides, like it did everywhere in the Pacific Northwest, I suppose, but it was an effect I was struggling to get used to. As I pulled up to Tommy's house for the first time, it was strange. I felt like even before I turned off the engine, I didn't belong there, like I had walked backstage at a theatre. Nobody stopped me, but I couldn't shake the impression that I'd gone somewhere I wasn't supposed to be. Even when Tommy came out and started to unpack the trunk, it seemed to me that he blended into the town in a way I just didn't. There was no sign this was anything other than in my own head, though. Tommy didn't seem to notice anything off, and as I shifted my stuff into the tiny bedroom, he wordlessly handed me a beer with a big smile. God, I'm getting so nostalgic about this. I used to edit this stuff. Like, I used to live on... Uh, I used to live in a tower block. I used to live on the seventh floor of a tower block in South London when I was editing this. And I remember I would have a view out of my window of like um, basically all of South London, sorry, like Southeast London. And I would edit this usually after I got home from work. And like I used to use the ambience of outside to help me get in the mood to edit. I don't know if you find this, if there are any editors here, I mean, props to you. Like I used to have to get into the headspace of editing horror because i don't come from a horror background i i would never attest to it but like you would have to be in the zone to be able to to actually get this to work how many hours of editing goes into each episode <sighs> like tens it's ridiculous there's so many hours of editing it's changed now obviously because things are much more complex now it's like t uh, lots lots more i couldn't even begin to guess but like back in the day there probably used to be about 10, maybe 5 to 10 hours of editing per episode. Um, and so, yeah, like, there were, and genuinely, editing this actually totally desensitized me to anything from the Magnus Archives. There were genuinely, like, maybe three episodes that actually made me jump. Shy Peach 95 welcome to the channel. There were like three episodes that genuinely made me jump. And one of those was because at one point I had a cat. And my cat actually, as the audio was saying that a wind blew across or something like that. Have you ever been to Great Yarmouth? She opened the, the door. The wax is exactly as creepy as you'd expect and the town has the exact same vibe. I have been to Great Yarmouth actually, but I haven't been to the House of Wax. For obvious reasons. Um, but like, you know, because <laughs> of my innate fear of animatronics and mannequins. But like, at the same time, like, it's 
it's just uh it sounds like a wonderful place uh, so enjoy it um good i i preach just to say um but yeah like there were only three episodes and one of those was because i had a cat and my cat came in literally just as like the it, they said that the wind was blowing across and i heard my door creak open like and i and i hit the fucking ceiling i hit the ceiling i i jumped so much that my cat didn't just run out of the room she ran out of the room down the stairs and hid behind the sofa <laughs> Like, oh my lord, I, oh Luna, I am so sorry. But like, at the same time, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> that was a time. I drank it gladly and tried my best to relax. As it turned out, my situation wasn't quite as dreadful as Thank I thought. You so much for I discovered the next day that my work had actually paid me a small TNA amount. It wasn't clear whether it was meant to be salary or severance, really, really and I couldn't get through to anyone who might have been oh, able glad to explain it. Does obsef- obsef- but it was enough Thank to you very much for the 100 bits. It's pressure. great to have you here. If I'm glad you're enjoying it. I allowed myself a few days to rest and recover from the chaos that the last week had been. I suppose technically I could have moved out of Tommy's place, but he seemed genuinely happy to have me around, and I reckoned my efforts were better spent looking for a new job than a place to live. Mm. I spent the next few days sleeping, drinking, and gently exploring the tiny town which now counted me among its residents. It was quiet, though God. by no means deserted. I regularly saw other people walking the streets, I remember though there all was of no this. sidewalk to speak of. I remember editing all of this. Like I remember the muscle memory is even coming back while I'm listening to this of like the keys that I used to be able to press when I just used to know like when I had to make a cut. And so I used to literally know all the key commands for cut, cut, and then uh, silence, remove. And like literally I would find every single, every single bit of uh, the bits where Johnny sort of ends speaking and starts speaking again, and I would make cuts all across it and live edit everything. So uh, by that, I mean, like, I would literally just cut the bit that I needed, space it out along the timeline so that it still made sense, time it, listen to it, time it, listen to it, time it, then let it play on, and then I would listen to all of it back again. And yeah, that was all on Audacity back in this, uh, back when we did this. It may have just been my imagination, but whenever they saw me, it seemed like they paused for just a moment, staring at me before they continued on their way. They seemed friendly enough apart from that, and there never seemed to be any subtext or hidden meaning behind their greetings. Yeah, the music, you're getting it now, aren't you, Chad? You're getting it. There's the music I'm not sure I ever saw any children, though maybe I'm reading too much into it. I found the pit almost immediately. You hold it right there. It wasn't like it was something that could easily be missed, sitting there at the intersection of River Street and Sixth, gaping up at the bright blue sky. It looked like a sinkhole, but almost completely circular. And Man. instead of the sheer drop of most such holes, this one sloped gently down towards a small opening at the centre, maybe 10 or 15 feet below street level. In mm. some ways it seemed more like a crater than a sinkhole. And then it was it so swells. neat and regular, I didn't think it could be the result of an impact or explosion. And it swells as he begins to talk slightly more emphatically about this pit, about this deep, dark recess into the earth. It was huge, bigger than the street that should have been there. And, and the thing up. that struck me as odd was that the road continued around it. A little bit of mid-tone. It seemed to split apart just before the pit and come together on the other side of it. I mean... I don't know if you can judge the age of a hole just by looking at it, but it didn't seem that old. The road did, though. Or at least it definitely hadn't been put down recently. There was no indication it had been laid separately to the rest of the town. The pit was just... there. It's so nice. I remember scoring all of this with these music tracks and just realizing that for this bit, you could just leave an audience in that moment because Johnny's delivery was excellent. And you, because he's so consistent and because you'd set the pacing, you could literally just leave the atmosphere there. And the longer the note holds, the longer the atmosphere perpetuates until eventually you don't know how long you've been there for. There's just you and that one moment of audio. And that's that's what I love about editing. That's one of the things I really love about editing. The fact that you can create a bubble, you can create a moment in a bubble and you can 
it, within that bubble, it doesn't necessarily matter what happens anymore. As long as you've constructed it right, as long as you've managed to create this space that you can hold an audience in, you can just keep them there for as long as you need to, as long as the atmosphere perpetuates. And then when you take it away, you take away the bubble by removing the music, removing the cues, all of a sudden you have this realization, oh, how much time has passed? As I stood, staring That's at the hole in the ground, I heard a car coming up the road behind me. I stepped to the side as it drove past and around the edges of the pit before continuing on. I glanced briefly inside the driver's side window, but there was no surprise on her face, no irritation at the obstacle. It seemed to have barely registered. I left soon afterwards, weirdly unnerved by its smooth, circular presence. I asked Tommy about it the next day. He was reaching to the kitchen to grab me a beer when I told him I'd stumbled across it when walking around town. I wondered, did he know anything about it? How long had it been there? Was it a sinkhole or an earthquake or, or what? It was only after I'd casually tossed out a whole and series of questions that I noticed Tommy had frozen in place, one hand in the fridge and the other on the door. He didn't seem alarmed or scared, just completely still. I was quiet for a few there, seconds, and then he building. took the beer out and handed it to me, shutting the little fridge behind him. He gave no indication that he'd heard me, so I asked again. The pit on Sixth and River, what was its deal? He looked at me for a while, like he was trying to puzzle out what I had said from a different language, then shrugged and mumbled something about old roads not being... That's the word I love it when Johnny says shrugged. I don't know why I love it so much, but I really, really do. I love the way he says shrugged. Is that weird? Is that a weird thing to say? I don't know, man. I, I think it probably is. But like, you know, it it's it's one of those things that I know about myself. It's not even the word shrugged. It's the way Johnny says it. Like, it's just that, ah, oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. Properly maintained. No, I said the pit, the big hole in the ground. He just shook his head like I was talking nonsense and headed off to his room. I tried to drink my beer, but it tasted thick and unpleasant on my tongue. Thick I beer. wanted to forget it, Whoa. to ignore the dusty crater that waited in the middle of this tiny town. Thick beer. I couldn't. Something about it rubbed at me, like a speck of dirt in my eye, but the more I tried to reach it, the deeper it went. I checked maps of the area, looking to see if any of them featured the old landmark, but I found ones that went right up to 2008, and none of them had anything marked at that spot even though the split in the road had clearly been there far longer than a year. I tried to talk about it, see if anyone else had any idea about what the pit was or why it was there, but when I asked around Joe's, the only diner in town, everyone reacted just like Tommy. Mishearing, misunderstanding, or just straight up ignoring me. It wasn't even like they seemed deliberately evasive. All their reactions seemed genuine, but no one was able to talk about the pit. I'd just about given up on getting anything sensible out of the people at Joe's that afternoon when an older man walked over to me. You know, I think it's worth mentioning at this point that one of the things I love about the delivery of this episode is the you can hear, like, the honesty in his voice. Like, you can actually hear the way that he articulates each each bit of this that makes you really want to buy into the character. And from my side, from an editor's perspective, that's exactly what I played to in all of the editing that I did with Johnny. I mean, Alex obviously is a fantastic director and like props to him for um, being able to build these scenes with Johnny in the way that he did. But certainly, like, certainly between the two of them, they create this weird atmosphere. If you listen to this without the music, right, because that's what I had to do for most of my career, and maybe some of those episodes will be released without music, I don't know. But if you listen to this without the music and just have the audio, I would argue that to some extent it's still just as good. Like, it's still just as good to just listen to them, like, just to talk amongst themselves, like the characters and stuff. It, it's one of those sorts of things. And I don't think you get that a lot. It's like when everyone points out in Friends, like if you take away the laughing track, suddenly like characters change. But I genuinely think that if you took away the music in this, 
It might not have the atmosphere anymore, but certainly I think it would still be just as creepy. I'd seen him around a bit, though I couldn't have told you who he was or what he did. He was big, though, with a face that looked chiselled out of limestone. I stopped eating and waited. The old man stared at me for what must have been a good twenty seconds and then he spoke. Nothing for you down there, he said. You just go and enjoy your sky. There was no mistaking the threat in his voice, as if I wasn't going to have a lot of time left to do so, and I was about to say something when his head suddenly snapped forward and he spat at my feet. Then he turned and walked away. I looked down and saw a thick brown lump of mud. Nobody Ooh. looked over. Now, now we know what that means. Now we know what that I means. Tried but to that take was advice. built into the I fiber have... of the fabric of the episode from this point. Other things to be worried about, and fundamentally, there was no reason for me to be so obsessed with a hole in the ground. Did you all in did you all hear that? Enjoy your sky? Yeah? Enjoy sky blue? Is this all coming together for you now? I mean, like, and the spitting of the mud as well? Like, when I was editing this, I didn't even know um, that, you know, they were going to go with the whole buried storyline and enjoy Sky Blue and all that stuff. But it was there the whole time. This is season two. This is season two. It wasn't even like I needed to travel that road. I was only regularly traveling to Olympia to apply for jobs. And from Tommy's house, the pit was in entirely the other direction. But I started to dream about it. Dream about walking into the pit, the ground turning to thick sucking mud underneath me. I dream about it filling my mouth, my lungs. I couldn't breathe. Man, mud does suck, huh? There was one. I can't honestly say if it was a dream, but I also can't bring myself to call it a memory. No, you're right. This is season three. <laughs> it was sunny, in the middle of the day. I could hear the sound of laughter from somewhere in town, soft voices chatting to each other. No, you're right. A this is season day. three. I walked as far as the pit, and for the first time, I crossed the edge and began to climb down into it. It was dry, dusty, and the air felt different from the rest of the town. Slowly, carefully, I walked to the hole in the center. Now, the fun thing to note about this is the pacing of this, right? A lot of the pacing does come from the acting, but... Actually, as well, I would argue that just as much of the pacing of this actually comes from the editing side as well, and being able to interpret what the actors have done. Listen to this bit again. To each other. A peaceful day. I walked as far as the pit, and for the first time, I crossed the edge. Now, do you remember what I was saying at the beginning of the episode? That Johnny's delivery sped up because of the characters, like, um, the characters changing over time. John's story arc, where he's basically becoming more of, you know, the archivist as we know them today. And, like, more of the, um, more of his stuff is speeding up. But at this point, he's fully in into the character now. Like, he's not John anymore. He's embodying this character and he's basically able to sort of make that delivery. But the delivery is slower. And the reason for that is because of the atmosphere of the episode. To be able to encourage you into a world of, like, dirt and earth and being buried. Because it needs to have a slower pace. It needs to feel... It needs to feel heavier. It needs to feel feel slower like a lot of the themes to do with the buried are about you know inching forward piece by piece and you know being like not seeing sky and feeling crushing weight down on you and that's exactly what the editor's job is is to give you that feeling is to be able to articulate that in audio um, and so through the delivery the editors will repace episodes like this to do those little micro tweaks that just make you believe that something bad is going to happen, but you never know what. And began to climb down into it. It was dry, dusty, and the air felt different from the rest of the town. Slowly, carefully, I walked to the hole in the centre. This bit looked more like a sinkhole disappearing down into the pitch darkness. It was less than a foot across, and I felt a gentle rush of cool, wet air. I sat there listening, convinced I could hear something. 
but there was only silence. Now, chat, at this point, at this time, I'm going to suggest that we take a very, very quick break. A very little quick break, just because I need to top up my water and, like, get myself some refreshments. I hope you don't mind. I'll only be, like, a minute or two. I really, really hope that you're enjoying this, like, little deep dive into some of the key episodes of the Magnus Archives, because I'm having so much fun. Um, like, so much fun with you guys, and I know that the rest of this is going to be awesome. The episode that I'm sort of a little bit nervous about talking about is next, actually, which is episode 104. Um, but, like, all of this, all of this, I'm having an immense time. Honestly, I am. I really, really hope, like I say, that you guys are enjoying it too. I will be back. I'm going to top up my water. I'm going to grab myself some more squash. And I will be back in about five minutes. I recommend that you guys go get yourself some tea or some coffee. Get nice and cozy. And see you right back here. Hello everyone, I am back. Thank you very much for bearing with me. Um, I have got myself a new cup of tea. I've got myself a big old glass of water. I hope that you guys have got yourself some things as well. And I put my Magnus Archives hoodie on. Woo! <laughs> Look, I got a, I got a Panopticon uh, hoodie as well. So I thought I'd stick this on for a little bit of the show because I think I actually bought this around season three. Helen Distortion is the embodiment of Gatekeep Gaslight Girl Boss. Whoa. Thank you very much, Spade Slick, for the 100 bits. He back! Yes, I am back. I am back. I am back. I am back. Are you guys ready to dive back in to the Magnus Archives? Are you ready to dive back into some killer commentary? Are we feeling it? A different hoodie from the last one? Yeah, exactly. I've got a few. <laughs> All right. So, chat, thank you for bearing with me. Like I say, the next episode um, will be... Well, we're, gonna, we're currently watching uh, episode 97, We All Ignore the Pit. The next episode is going to be episode 104, um, which, as some of you quite rightly pointed out, is in fact the Tim episode. It's Tim's statement, so a little bit nervous about talking through that one, but, you know, at least I'll be able to talk more about the character. I'm loving this stream, thanks the for Magnus doing it. The road trip is taking roughly two days What a way to start the weekend. Stops, Thank you, sweet facts. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us here today. J Adams 2002, your road trip plans sound like they're coming along. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. Big Preesh, you want the comfort crew? Come on, Derek. <laughs> Come on, Des, look. They're asking about you. Look, all of your fans are here, see? There's 400 people here. There's more than, there's 430 people here, roughly. Come on, Derek. Come on, come and sit with me. Here we are. Derek's here, everyone. Derek's on the show. This is Derek the Comfort Camel. Uh, you can summon Derek by using your stream shinies, uh, which is good fun. All right, then. Let's get back to ignoring a hole. I leaned closer, my head directly over the hole. Mm. I enjoy it when I lean closer directly over the hole. And I heard it. <laughs> All right, so we're getting to the crux of the episode now. And then I did what it told me to. I took my hand and I reached down into the darkness. Down and down until my whole arm was inside up to the shoulder. It was damp and cold with the rough stone sides scraping my skin. But my hand was stretched as far as I could and it still gripped nothing but empty air. Then the whole listen as well at this point right for those of you who were listening to what i was saying before listen to how the music's changed now that something is happening like now he's actually engaging with the entity and you can hear this really high little trill this really high little trill over the top all began to close and all can at once the spell was broken i tried to pull my arm out to get free but it held me tight now that is a nod to what i was talking about before when an entity uses its power, you can hear this really high little trill, but it's actually used more now for like, it's no, it's used more now for just musical uh, intensity, but certainly it's present. Not quite crushing me, but holding me in place. I screamed and cried for help, looking around for anyone who might be able to hear me. But the only people walking by seemed utterly oblivious to what was happening. There it is. Then I felt it. Something brushing against my hand from below it in the hole. Teeth. Wet, blunt teeth. 
which quickly gave way to a rough, slender tongue that wrapped itself around my hand and snaked up my arm as though tasting me. Then without warning I felt it snap back into the darkness, taking some of the skin with it and my arm was abruptly released. The next thing I remember I was lying in bed. I want to say I had just woken up, and it was all a dream. But I was fully dressed, dusty, and with long thin scratches that snaked around my arm. Whoa. That was when I started desperately looking for a way to leave Bokoda. I'd been there for just over a month by this point and had managed to find a part-time job over in the nearby town. And that, and that tonal shift. Just to say, I know I've been talking a lot about tone and feeling, but realistically that's, that's the bit that I can sort of add some relevance to here. And you can feel, you can feel that tonal shift. It's like it, when he gets out of the pit and when he's away from the pit, you sort of feel him leaving because the weight drops this oppressive bass that sort of in the background drops and goes away like it's one of those things where you can just sort of experience it almost with the person like almost with the actor in this instance like you you actually feel that you feel that release as the editor has now let you go out of the episode Jahalis. The pay wasn't great, but it should have been just about enough to move out if I was careful. Tommy was upset, of course, but didn't seem surprised. That month had been a bit tense, and we weren't particularly well suited to living together anyway. I suppose that's what you get for moving in with strangers you meet in a bar. It was the night before I left that it happened. 17th June 2008. I'd got all my things boxed up and ready to go. I had the keys to my new place. All I had- to Oh, let me be clear, Alf Crimes. I'm talking about the music. Johnny's tone is on point, but I'm talking about the music. To do was get one more good night's sleep. Instead, I was woken up about two in the morning by the sound of the front door closing. I called out, but Tommy didn't respond. I searched the house to make sure no one had broken in, but the place was empty. I was alone. Tommy's business was his own, I there's, decided. There's I was about to return again. to bed when I saw a shadow pass by the window. It, and it increases. Then another. I quietly moved to the door and pushed it open, looking out into the street to see if I could figure out what was going on. Who's the shadow? There aren't a lot of street lights in Bakoda, and at night, when all the houses are dark, it can get very eerie indeed. Very I was close enough to see the figures eerie. moving down the road, though. They walked casually, like they were just going for a stroll. But there were a lot of them. And it Maybe the whole towns Walking out of their houses and trailers and down the unlit streets. And it brings you back I knew in again. Exactly where Just, it's like all good horror, I think, is to do with the emotion that is presented during the horror. And this is literally just like a way of the audio kind of guiding you through that moment. But the thing is, at this point, you don't even realise that you're like you're locked in to that moment until it comes back again. You feel this release of tension as he tries to go back to sleep. And then in the night, that bass just comes again and grabs you. And by the time you realize you've been grabbed, it's too late. Where they were going. And I just couldn't stop myself following them. I don't know how the whole town was able to get inside the pit. There must have been hundreds of them, piled high and encrusted with mud. They did not move, though their eyes shone so brightly in my torch that they must have been alive. None of them made a sound, though I could feel a warmth and shuddering below my feet as though the earth itself was screaming. Without warning, one of their heads snapped towards me. It was a young woman who had lived the next road over and whose name I had never learned. She stared at me, eyes suddenly alive with terror, and began to scream. If there's a load of people who are in a hole together, a pit you might say, does that mean that every single one of them has taken a pit stop? We may never know. The instant she did, she disappeared, pulled into the ground cutting the sound off before it had even begun. I turned and ran, back to the house. 
I wanted to drive away, but I couldn't bear to be outside, so I hid under my bed the rest of the night and felt the ground rock gently beneath me. I don't know if Tommy returned the next day. As soon as it was light outside, I leapt into my car and began to drive away. I tried to, at least. I didn't want to see the pit again. I really didn't. But I did. It was empty as before, like the previous night had never happened. But it was bigger, and the road had swelled to encompass it. There was someone else looking at it, though. An elderly woman, face pinched and thoughtful, An stood at the edge woman. looking down. I didn't recognize her or the car she stood next to. She definitely wasn't from Bakoda. Sat in the car next to her, I could see a young man who had clearly been crying. I couldn't get over how blue his eyes were. And now... The old woman caught my eye and looked from me to the pit. Listen, back. you don't even realize how suddenly... How suddenly the music changed to show the entrance of the old woman. Again. I thought about saying something when she gestured for me to leave. And I did. I decided that I was no part of whatever was happening. So I drove away and didn't look back. And now it goes. That night, the earthquake struck that destroyed Bakoda entirely. As if he was driving away. So I away, guess I'll never know what was going on. The music ducks out on a long... Honestly, ramp out i'm glad statement ends and that that for me is x is just the timing in this i love it so much one of the big things i love about this episode is that is that outro the the fact that the music switches when you introduce this new character almost instantly and in that moment, you get a feeling of, okay, I kind of know that I might be safe now. And then he says that she gestured him away, and he says that he went. And from that point, the music lets you go. It lets you go as if you were driving out in the car with the guy. And at the very end, it all slows down to end the story gently statement ends like that i love it i love it i love it i love it 10 out of 10 print it print it everyone print why it why has elias sent me this statement it took place the other side of the world to people who don't seem to have any connection with what's going on i've suspected for a while there may be some power concerned with caves and enclosed spaces being buried alive or crushed so i suppose it's nice to get a statement that goes some way to developing that theory but I cannot figure out what it has to do with our current situation. Is it the nameless old man, the old woman, or whoever was crying in the car? Is he trying to warn me not to ignore my own metaphorical pit? Because if so, what is my metaphorical pit? You know, it's somehow worse now that I know I can ask why he's sending me these statements, but that he still won't tell me. I did my follow-up. Mr. Ellis is still alive and well, currently living in Tacoma and unwilling to discuss <laughs> these events any further. It's all in the timing, chat. And I don't think I don't think anyone listening to this realizes it's all in the timing of that delivery. Like yeah, like I say, that the cast of the Magnus Archives does such a great job, but like Oh man, the timing the just of itself giving is... you that moment, giving you that moment to think about it. That's the difference between just literally having a knee-jerk reaction and the way that the episode is paced, allowing you to actually soak in what's going on and form your own opinion. Because a lot of the time, when all of this audio is compressed together, you don't actually have time to think about what it is that's happening, but... In this moment, you're given that moment of reprise. You're, you're given that moment to be able to go... Oh, no. <laughs> like, it's it's one of those things. It's one of those things, and I love it. Oh, the Batara! Oh, Derek, you're going to have to get down here now. Oh, the Batara! Oh, my God, but right at the pivotal moment! Keep watching, chat. Well, it's gone. Newspapers reported it as an earthquake, and tremors were felt as far away as Castle Rock. But despite every article describing Bokoda as having been destroyed by the earthquake, there are no pictures or records of the destruction itself. 
No damage seems to have occurred outside of town limits, and all of the roads in the area seem unaffected, despite there being no evidence of rebuilding works taking place after the events. As far as I can tell, there was an earthquake, and then Bakoda wasn't there. But aside from these two details... Oh. <sighs> Alright, let's... Nailed it. Georgie, where's your fuse bu Right. Right. Keep saying it's not meant to trip whenever one bulb goes, but no, John, I don't want to bother the landlord. D and there. Now, this is what you all were saying, and I saw it, chat. There's the ee sound from the Magnus archives. That was made by Sam Sam the Music Man. That was the highest note that we had available. And this is the big entrance. <sighs> that sort of like Psycho kind of, you know the film Psycho? To do that. There it is. I mean, you can if you really want to, but you're not going to like it. Sometimes not being able to see something is actually quite a good thing. Here's my clown wife. Who are you? <laughs> well, Thank you, space my slip. Thanks me a lot Nicola, of and then I killed him. So I thought I rather deserved to have his second name too. And thanks for the nine months up. Which makes me Nikola Orsinov. Pleased to meet you at last. You um, mm. you killed Gregor Orsinov. Yep. He got really boring, and I'm a monster. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to do? Oh my god, they must have had so much fun shooting this. I can't even begin to imagine. Pull him apart? I, I did use all the bits. I, you, you don't sound Russian? How could I sound anything, silly? I'm plastic. I don't even have a voice box. I had to borrow this one. There's the beam. Don't turn on the light. There it is. Are you going to kill me? No! I mean, yes, but not for a good long while yet. I don't want you to go to waste. Then, no, then, then what? Then why are you here? After you attacked poor Sarah, I thought it was about time we had a good old chat. Face to no face. I to... Well... What are these captions? What do you want? You remember that old piece of skin you were talking about? We'd like it back. We thought that mean old Gertrude had destroyed it. But then you went looking and now we think that maybe she was just very good at hiding. Gotta love a bit of good old skin, huh? Gotta love some some good skin chat. Like, you don't get this sort of stuff in any, like, body care adverts. This really should be, like, the body shop's, um, like, the body shop's advert, to be honest with you. This is what good skin care looks like. I'm sorry, are you asking me to find it for you. That would be lovely, and a lot nicer for you than our other ideas. It... What is so important about some ancient bit of taxidermy? <laughs> I want to wear it when I dance the world new. But, but what? <gasps> uh, question time is over, little archivist. Find the skin for us. There's a drill. You have until, well, until I change my mind. <gasps> Save your energy for the dance. Now, that, that outro, I mean, at this point, you guys had no idea the Archives is a podcast where this was going. By Rusty Quill. But we did. Creative Commons we knew exactly where this was going. International license. And today's episode. This was episode by just sent Sims it. And directed Do you know what I mean? Alexander In Dane. a major way. To subscribe, view associated material, or join our Patreon, visit rustyquill.com. <laughs> visit West. Visit West Equal Comrade. <laughs>
<laughs> Rate and review us online. Tweet us at the Rusty Quill. Oh, Visit us on God. Facebook or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Rusty <laughs> Rusty Qualcomm. I love this. Oh my god. Why did Qualcomm get an advert here? The website or on Reddit at r slash the Magnus Archives. Oh. Look at it on Reddit. Thanks, r slash the Magnus episode magazine. Good work. Good work, everyone. Great work. Thanks, YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Good I work. I think I got the job, so have some gift subs. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten captioning, YouTube. Two, 200 out of three. My God. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Chat. That was that. Episode 104 is next. Uh, and this, as you may remember, is the Tim statement. Now, I was chatting to... The, when I set this up, right, I actually wasn't going to do this episode. Um... Because I didn't want to seem, like, superficial. I didn't want it to seem like this was just an entire setup so that, like, I could have my big moment. But, like, I was actually encouraged by some of the some of the team. Uh, they actually said to me, you should include episode 104. Um, and so I chucked it in here for you. Do remember, guys, that, like, you can still vote for the last one that we do. Um, because we've got this episode and one more. So we've got this episode and then episode 161. And then after that, you guys get to decide what episode we listen to. Crunchy, uh, one of our major mods, uh, alongside all the other major mods, uh, is currently collating your votes. So please do vote for the episode that you would like. Come on, Derek. Come on. Come on, Derek. Come up. Come up here. Come up here now. Apparently, the current top list is 91, 92, 100, 111, 114, 127, and 170. So it's all to play for, chat. There's still a lot to go. I'm going to keep an eye on the most popular ones and poll the top five. Great work, Crunchy. A big love to the mods as well, by the way, once again. So, chat. Here we go. Now, I remember... I remember preparing for this episode. I, this was the own, I had been wondering for months whether or not I was actually going to be able to do an entire statement. I, I had, I had wanted to for a very, very, very long time, but I'd never had the opportunity. And eventually, after speaking to Johnny and after speaking to Alex, they said that my statement was coming up. I actually knew that I was going to be giving a statement from there or thereabouts like a month before this happened. Um, and so, like, this is this is something that I was mentally preparing myself for. I didn't actually receive the script until about two weeks before we did this, I don't think. It was roughly about two weeks before we actually shot this. So I had two weeks to look over the script and, like, prepare myself for what was going to happen. Now, bearing in mind that this is episode 104, so this is season 3 still, like, there was a lot going through my head before we did this episode. To play Tim in season 3, I had to go to such a dark place. Like, when, when I perform Tim, I've only, seen, I've only ever seen myself performing Tim very recently when me and Alistair did the... Um, when me and Alistair did the reads that we did for RQGG, I'd never actually looked at myself performing Tim before. But when I perform Tim, my whole demeanor changes. I become much more stooped over. All of the emotion drains out of my face. And, like, I have to think about really dark things that have happened, like, both in my life and to other people, to get into the zone to play this character. And at this point, like, to be able to perform the entire thing, the only real note that I was given before I did this was that to, I was meant to start as Season 3's Tim and then ramp it back up to be, like, around Season 1. Like, early Season 2, Season 1 Tim. So, 
I had to then drag, you can hear it in this as well, I had to drag myself out of that dark place to play Tim Mike, do you for need this. a hug? Do I need a hug? Oh, thank you very much, Jay Adams 2002. I, I, would I would always love a hug. Save that for when we meet up at a convention. Just like, come find me at a convention somewhere. When, when we're doing those again, when they open up. And we'll do it then. How about that? Um, like, so yeah. But well, the point really is that... <laughs> thank you, chat. You're too kind. You're way too kind. This the... episode absolutely broke my heart. So good job, Mike. Oh, thank you very much, Eternal Radio. I still actually get messages on Twitter from people saying, What have you done to me? Like, I... <laughs> I genuinely can't believe it, but I, I still do, and I and I love it. And thank you to everyone who supported me through this journey. So, without further ado, chat, here we go. Episode 104, Sneak Preview. Bard Bastard, welcome to the channel. Thanks for following us today. It's great to have you here, dude. Welcome. Rusty Quill presents The Magnus Archives Rusty Quill presents The Magnus Jagnus Episode 104 As someone who goes plays Sneak Tim doing preview. Tim audios always leaves me emotionally drained You did a great job Mike Oh thank you very much I appreciate that Thank you very much for the 100 bits now, as someone who cosplays... What did you say, sorry? As someone who cosplays Tim, doing Tim audio always leaves me emotionally drained. You did a great job. Well, I'm glad that you feel it too, dude. It's nice to have someone to be able to share that emotional burden with. But it's worth mentioning, chat, at this point again, that this does come with content warnings. This comes with content warnings. Please check the content warnings. Exclamation mark CW. If you don't know what they are, they're in the chat now. They're right over here. So go and check them out. Please. Oh. Fantastic. oh, sorry, Tafiera. Thank you very much for reminding me and thank you for the 100 bits. Sorry, I keep forgetting to put the captions on. I apologize. I think actually the transcript is available for this. Uh, Zalia, did you post that a little minute ago? If so, would you mind doing it again? Um, like, I'd love that. Oh, hello, April. Welcome to the chat. Statement of Eduardo Acosta regarding the night of October 9th. Ah! Oh. Sorry. Oh, Christ, Tim. Oh, I... <laughs> oh. I genuinely enjoyed doing this first bit of the scene. I, I messed around so much with Alex when we put this together. I, I messed around so much. I mean, all of the, all of the sound effects are in post. But like the little yelp, I I I laughed just straight up <laughs> so many times. Oh god, it's all right. It's just a shock. I didn't realise you were. You've been moving boxes in here for a while. You... Have you? Yeah. Everything all right? Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I kind of zone out a bit when I have to read a statement. Right. We'll see ya. <sighs> Oh, no, Tim, uh, Tim, mm. uh, while I've got you, there's a book I was after for, um, well, it was uh, uh, The Marvelous Spiritualism and the Circus in the 19th Century. I asked up in the library, but Tom said you had it checked out. Yeah. Why? Oh, you know, just looking into anything and everything that might pin down the unknowing. The what? So, so what you hear in this episode, chat, in the beginning, is this really emotionally removed husk of a Tim with the ever-loving, ever-wanting-to-do-better Martin trying, trying to engage him in a conversation somehow and failing utterly. Not through his fault, any of his, like, own fault, but he just can't break through because I think at this point, like, Tim is so traumatized. It's, uh, it's quite, it's a lot. 
No bless, Jess. Thank you very much for the 12 months. Welcome to having your yellow cow, by the way. Uh, Notus Le Leith? Notus Leith? Hey, eh? Welcome. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. Suroski. Welcome. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. You're amazing. With more, thanks for the 1 tier 1 community gift sub. Genetic Geekery, thank you very much for the 5 tier 1 community gift subs. Brother Maya Pua, thank you very much for the 1 tier 1 community gift sub. And our Jipper, thank you very much for the 10 bits. Hype trains are amazing. What? You're doing amazing, Mike. Thanks. Well, am I supposed to know what that Thank is, or, or what? Oh, um, <laughs> I just thought someone would have told you by now. Well, they haven't. Tim getting angry was one of my favourite things to do, to be honest with you. Tim, Tim getting angry, I loved it because you can really put your entire body into speaking that way. Like, you can really, you push everything out of you. Oh my god. What are you talking about? I mean, I'm not sure. Martin, what is the unknowing? And what does it have to do with the circus? It's... It's uh, a ritual. I don't know that... It's... It's bad. Like, really bad. Can you hear the music? Can you hear it? Like maybe end of the world bad, and the circus is doing it. The the, the Russian ones, the uh, circus of the other. <laughs> no, 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 no. We haven't. There hasn't been a circus statement since Leanne Denikin's last year, and that was a dead end. There's someone would have told me. But Tim, you've someone been out of it for a while. Should have told me. I was genuinely in this scene, almost like spitting in Alex's face with rage. Like, that's so how into the- I was- I was glaring directly at him across the desk. I remember all of this. Script in front of me. I wasn't even looking at the table. I wasn't even looking at the script. I was just bearing into Alex. Like, I was almost off my seat with just this, like, with this, like, really tense chest. Basically just, like, ripping into him. Um, like, character acting like this, it, it, it was very cathartic, like someone said earlier. Why? Tim, are you alright? Turn it off. What? Turn it off! Oh, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Please, Tim. No. He needs to hear I it. I don't. Care. He can't help if he doesn't know. I don't want his help, Martin. Elias seems to think that he's the best chance that we have to stop them. And what? I'm supposed to just trust Elias now? Please. <sighs> Hugs for everyone here, three. Fine. I'll tell him in <laughs> Thank person. Thank you very much. When he Thank gets you back for the from bits. Wherever it is that he's vanished to. China. And if you try to tell him in person, you'll just end up at each other's throats. Tim and you Martin's you friendship will. is so sad. I wouldn't even call it a friendship, to be honest with you. They, by the end of this, they were, they were still friends, I think, but loosely. Right, I've got to go. He'll catch the rest of this on VOD. Statement. All right, dude. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining Stoker. us today. And thanks for the bits. On the disappearance of my brother Danny four years ago. June 14th, 2017. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, do you know what? It's really weird, actually. The reason why I was so... Sorry, Derek, you're going to have to go down here because I'm gesticulating too much. The, the reason why I was so nervous about listening to this is because whenever I hear this episode, I still remember all of the things that I felt this stream is amazing. when I was performing thank it. Thank you, Mike Party 100. I, I like oh thank you very much indeed and thank you for the bits. I still I still feel all of the things I remember that I was projecting through the character. Like it's it's such a it's such a, a visceral episode. Like, oh my god. Thank you. Poor Tim. Statement begins. Poor Tim. <laughs> yeah, quite right. Too right. Poor Tim. My little brother Danny. He was always better than me. He was a couple of years younger, but by the time he hit 21, he was already taller, fitter, better looking. Now, listen for the ramp up.
because you're going to hear in this episode Tim go from season three to season one. If you jump between time points in this episode, you get a totally different performance. It was one of my most favorite performances for that reason. I mean, he didn't have my winning John sense Tim's of humor. John and friendship hurt but he me didn't a lot. Need it. Booyah, too right. Too right. It Thanks for the 100 for bits. I think a lot of people in my situation would have been jealous. Really but enjoying this stream. Not me. Glad you are, dude, and thank you for the bits. Big preach. Was always doing some, some charity race or endurance course. Now, I think it was charity that was my trigger word in this one. Mike, you seem like you would be an amazing scene partner to work with. The oh, way you talk you. about just putting so much is a dream acting experience. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you feel that way. Who knows? Who knows where our paths may cross one day in that regard. But listen to this bit, chat. Listen to listen to what happens after the word charity, because I remember thinking this. And when I thought when I heard charity, I remember thinking of gaming and giving, and that was my out of that emotional state. That was my ramp up. It's not a problem for him. I think a lot of people in my situation would have been jealous, but not me. I was just proud of him. Can you hear it? Always... Can you hear the difference? Can you hear the difference now? It's it. I didn't realise this until afterwards, but it's actually quite stark. Begins. My little brother Danny. He was always better than me. He was a couple of years younger, but by the time he hit 21, he was already taller, fitter, better looking. I mean, he didn't have my winning sense of humour, but he didn't need it. That was, and my winning sense of humor, I remember looking at this in the script, that was one of the first lines where you know, you know that deep down inside whatever is happening there, that punny, that punny Tim from season one is still living in this person. They are still in there and you know that they are, but it's covered by these layers of so many other things. Charisma. It wasn't a problem for him. I think a lot of people in my situation would have been jealous, but not me. I was just proud of him. I was always doing some some charity race or endurance course, getting modeling gigs while I worked quietly away in publishing. It made me smile. I remember he actually got a job doing some publicity shots for the company that owned my local gym. It was a good five months where whenever I walked down to my offices... Actually, do you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something, and this is something very personal. Um, now, I I told you... Now, there's a, there, this This comes with content warnings, so... All right, chat, I got if, to run. If you're You'll already feeling... If you're good feeling the sadness and you don't speed. want any more... You've got this. Hunt now is the time around. to take the headphones off. I'm going to give you a quick warning, right? So I'll give you a wave like this... Yeah, I'll give you a wave like this. That's when you come back. All right, so I'll wave like this, and that's when you come back. But if you if this is too sad for you already, trust me, it's about to get a whole lot worse. <laughs> so just bear that in mind, okay? Now, here's the headphone off. All right? Has everyone taken their headphones off? All right, okay. So the place that I had to go to get into Tim being the way that he was through season, end of season two, season three, all the way to the end. The place that I had to go was I in the last, like uh, before this, I think about, was it a year? Maybe a year, maybe a couple of years before this. I, I used to have a dog. Um, years and years and years ago. And I think it was a couple of years before this. You can see where this is going. So here's the content warning. But I I lost my dog, who unfortunately I lost him to cancer. And that was a very, very difficult pill to swallow. Um, because he had so much life in him and the, even the vet said that he could have gone for a few more years until he eventually went. So there's that. Um, it was it was one of the saddest moments of my life. I can easily say, easily. 
Um, f I'm fortunate enough to have not experienced that much loss in my life, but that that was a real kicker for me. And I know there are some people in the chat who won't get that, but like, uh, and I understand you and I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And it's great that if you don't understand that, that really is a good thing um, because uh, you're probably a better person than me. But that was twinned with the fact that I... There's no real easy way to say this. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saving this, saying this live on air. This is very heavy, by the way. Second warning. That is twinned with the fact that I should, in real life, have had a twin brother. And didn't. Because of complications very early on. And the place that I had to go to get into this character was thinking of those two moments together and experiencing all of that loss all over again to be able to get me in the right frame of mind to be able to perform this. So that's the motivation that I had was to do well, you know, to smash it. But like that's the but that's where we had to go. Anyway, you can come back now. You can put your headphones back on. We're it's over. The the sadness is gone now. We're going away. Um, but yeah, that is that's something very personal. That's something that you probably wouldn't have known uh, up until now. Um, so and I'm fine by the way, chat. I appreciate all of the love. I really, really do. I am fine. I'm absolutely fine. Like this is stuff that I've worked through long, long, long time ago. It's it's stuff that I have been aware of for a very, very long time. And like, in order to get character motivations that are dark, sometimes you have to visit that darkness again. Is basically what I'm saying. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of to give you an undertone of where my head was. Thank you, Mike, for everything. Oh, you are welcome. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. I, I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate all of the support. Thank you, chat. Um, but yeah, there you are. That is uh, that is essentially the story of of how I got into this character, of, of how I was able to empathize with Tim so that I could work out what he would do and what he would say and how he would react. Like, that was that is very very yeah that's that's how it works anyway so with that to one side <laughs> give your pets a big old kiss tonight um from me and let's crack on is there he'd be twice as large as life smiling down from a poster and challenging me to take them up on their Big joining thanks, fee <laughs> thank you off. thank you juno steel i, I appreciate did. it thank you for the 100 it bits. always brought a smile to my face when i saw it we didn't really talk much, me and Danny. We were still pretty close. And he'd usually keep me updated on whatever his latest obsession was. So now, coming back into it, so now that you can feel the you can feel the emotional change, right? You can you can actually start to feel that ramp up in in emotion and you can feel that change in his character that then comes through into the rest of this episode tend to throw himself into a thing completely for about six months and well, then he'd get bored and something new would catch his eye. Like um, back in 2013, it was urban exploration. He'd come down to London, stay with me for a couple of days and we'd end up having drinks with uh, Abigail Ellison, who's a mutual friend of ours from back home. Abby had been doing the urban exploration thing on and off for a few years and was telling us a few of her close calls in some of the sites down near the old Docklands. Oh, chat! Look, so I can see what you're. I can see what you're all saying. I can see what you're all saying, and I think that you're great. By the way, I think that you're very, very brave for sitting through something like this and for experiencing these emotions because they're not easy to handle. But certainly, let it be a positive thing, not a negative thing. Let it be a a remembering or a reminder that you know, you should always appreciate the things that you have in your life. It's the lesson that I took forward from all of this, is you should always appreciate the things that you have right in front of you. Because you either earned them, or they were there anyway. And certainly, if they were there anyway, it doesn't mean you should appreciate them any less. You know, it means that you should actually hold on to them tighter 
because at the end of the day, you know, they are yours. <laughs> and having that knowledge or having an objective understanding that those things are stuff that or those things are things that are yours and no one's going to take it away from you no one is going to do that which is why you need to look at them sometimes and air them out and just say you know hey actually do you know what this thing's pretty great like this right now this thing here is pretty great that's exactly what i did every time i went into the studio to perform for magnus it gave me this appreciation that I had worked very, very, very hard to get there, to, to be in front of that microphone. I had done a lot of things that had led me to that moment. And understanding those and having a little think about them, you know, have a little think about them every now and again. Just take yourself away and think about them. Like, just know, or just take that time to know that those things are yours. And this is what you have. I mean, like everyone is saying, you know, my pets are here. That's great. That's that's really, really great. Just enjoy that, you know, enjoy that moment of, you know, whatever it may be. Maybe you've got a cat, maybe you've got a dog, a hamster, a rat, a gerbil. It doesn't matter. Just take that moment and look at them and think, yeah, do you know what? I've got this. Like, that's mine. You know, that this experience that I'm having, this bond that I formed, that's mine. You know, like, and enjoy it for everything it's worth enjoy it for everything because it's awesome yeah you do that for me chat you do that for me all right let's carry on as she talked i was just watching danny's eyes light up and i knew exactly what was happening his passion for sailing was starting to wane after almost a year and i was sure i was watching him discover his next project when Abby mentioned she had a trip lined up for the old Millennium Mills in Newham, well, it was pretty much a done deal. At the time, I quite liked the idea. It wasn't the weirdest thing to ever catch Danny's attention, not by a long shot. And secretly, I thought he and Abigail would maybe make kind of a cute couple. So I was quite encouraging. Not that he needed it. Not that he needed it. I... Oh my god, I can remember... That time, that time that I ended up doing this, like, I had to, I actually managed to do this in, in very few takes. I think I managed to do this in two or three total takes, and then there were, like, some bits and pieces in between. But I remember being, like, sat there and feeling like, yes, I bossed this. Um, and then obviously we did all the pickups and everything, but I, I remember coming away from this thinking, god damn... Like, I don't think I've ever done a performance like that before. It's weird, isn't it? The things that can change your life. You can plan for all the devastating, terrible possibilities you can imagine. And it will always be those tiny, unexpected things that get you. You know, the things that you never even noticed as they were happening, just, just nudging everything into motion but even if there was a way i could have known i really don't think i'd be able to have stopped him so and there's the that music months, swelling that in you can My feel cool it in little the brother was creeping in explorer. slowly it suited him i got used to my phone buzzing at my office desk as he filled it with pictures of his smiling face in front of some I don't know, rusted machine or hidden tunnel he never did get together with Abby, but it only took a couple of trips with her and he'd learned what he needed. He talked a few of his friends into it. <laughs> I love like I actually really enjoyed that line. I was like, yeah, why where did Abby go? Like what whatever happened there? Like I actually genuinely really wanted to delve into that a little bit further and find out why it didn't work out with Abby. Um because <laughs> in the back of my mind, I was like uh where this <laughs> um you know it is was it like a screw you abby get out of get out of here abby or was it uh more amicable than that abby was web all along was abby fabby who knows maybe abby wasn't fabby maybe abby was drabby Wait, hard to tell started going on trips further afield i thought he'd be down in london more than he was but Turns out there are even more interesting abandoned places up north. 
and they tend to be less guarded than they are down here, so that was where he spent most of his time. There was one thing that did draw him down to London, though, and what he referred to as ghost buildings. There might ghost have been some official buildings. name in the... Uh, if that isn't the name of, like, some, I don't know, like, punk band somewhere, it is now. Or maybe, like, an indie band. It is now. Ghost buildings. An exploration community, I don't know. He stopped using the jargon around me after I joked that Urbex sounded like a brand of drain cleaner. <laughs> what he was talking about was the places where <laughs> newer build. <laughs> it does! It does sound like a brand of drain cleaner. <laughs> buildings had been constructed in or, I don't know, over the remains of an earlier one, but development had left some of the old pieces intact. Sometimes it was just a wall or two made out of a different material, but occasionally there'd be an entire hidden basement or bricked up room. I don't know why. That little pause. That little pause. I purposefully added in there at the time because that is something that Tim did in season one. That That's actually a thing that Tim did was there would be pauses between sentences. Like, well, not in between sentences. There'd be pauses between bits of sentences. Made out of a different material. Listen. But occasionally there'd be an entire hidden basement or bricked up room. I don't know why there i don't know why but danny loved them then another pause he talked for hours about crumbling pieces of history desperately clinging on to existence but and that was my impersonation of john <laughs> to be honest i never really got it i guess i didn't have to anyway according to him london had more of these ghost buildings than anywhere else in the country He'd been exploring for a few months when he first mentioned Covent Garden Theatre. It had been destroyed by fire twice since it was first built in 1732, and well, he was convinced that the current building stood on top of floors and floors of hidden and abandoned ruins. The discarded cocoons of its previous life, as he once put it. There you go. And that little laugh, that little laugh that I put in there, was again to tell you that this is season one, Tim. Like, this, is, this isn't the Tim that you have known up to now. Cocoons, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the Tim that you've known up to now. This is the original Tim. The current building stood on top of floors and floors of hidden and abandoned ruins. The discarded cocoons of its previous life, as he once put it. There you go. He showed me maps and measurements a few photo sets from others who'd apparently been there before. I never asked him to, but well, when he was excited, he just wanted everyone else to share it. That was... that was Danny. He was just like that. And then the pace changes. While he was talking about the second Theatre Royal in Covent Garden, uh, the one that lasted less than 50 years before it burnt down... You hear that? That was when I first heard the name Robert Smirk. All Robert through Smirk this, comes in, I was trying to talk him out of and going. And the audio flares. Because, well, what had once been the Covent Garden Theatre is nowadays known as the Royal Opera House, which is about as far from an abandoned building as you can get. And I really didn't think that trespassing there would be a good idea. You can feel it now, right? Now Daddy the horse is galloping. It. Now we're back into, into the season main building, one, he told me, and had figured out a route he claimed would lead him into the abandoned levels below without crossing anywhere that might actually attract security. And he was going alone. So he didn't need to worry about attracting too much attention. I told him it was a bad idea, but I'd never been able to stand in the way of his confidence. So late on Wednesday night in August 2013, my little brother went to break into the ruins hidden under the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous to say it out loud, but there it is. I don't know how long he was gone. I went to bed around one in the morning and he hadn't gotten back. It was a hot night and I woke up a few hours later needing a glass of water. There were the first hints of dawn filtering in through my living room windows. God damn, I remember reading this script. 
I, I remember reading this script and getting to this bit and knowing, knowing that that was the marker that was going to mean that everything from this point is downhill. Like, there there are bits in scripts for the Magnus Archives where you just know, once you've played a character for long enough, you just know where it's all going to go wrong. Oh boy. Giving it this quiet, otherworldly feeling. Danny was sat in my big armchair, completely still. I smiled, feeling suddenly a little bit unsettled and trying my best to hide it, and I'd asked how it had been, but he didn't answer. I asked him if he'd found anything. I didn't realise that when I played Tim, I'd drop slowly. all my teas. But, I saw as he tilted his head but, but his cheeks stuff like were that. just wet with tears. He mumbled something then, very quietly, and I couldn't really make it out, but it sounded like the name Joey. It was all kind of surreal, strange, and I started to think I might be dreaming, but I'd never seen him cry before. I tried to talk to him, find out what was wrong, but he just kept shaking his head. And then there's a, t a music there tonal in change again. For a long time. I didn't know what to do. The whole situation was so alien. I thought maybe I could try and get him some rest, God, let him I'm collect glad I didn't himself. Have to edit so this. after some coaxing, I got him onto the couch. As he laid down. I heard him say something else. I could, I could not edit this. I, I could not edit this. I can't remember who did, but I, I, I just remember thinking, God, if they give me this one as a final editing piece, like, I, I'm gonna lose it. I thought it sounded like the show must go on, and at that moment, you know, I actually thought that was a good sign. I watched for a few more minutes until he was asleep, and then I went back to bed. Though it was a while before I fell back to sleep. That night was the last time I ever saw Danny. So you can tell at this point, right, that the that Tim is back, right? At this point, Tim is is basically back. Not fully. He's not completely there, but he's mostly back. And you'll hear the difference when we play Dwelling, which is the next episode, right? But like, you there are all of the cues that the original Tim is here. And that's how they break your heart, <laughs> I'm afraid, chat. When I woke up a few hours later, he was gone. So, uh, strap in, folks, because I know what happens here, and I'm sure you do too. But the thing is, when there's an up, there's always a down. <laughs> he left no note, no hint of where he may have gone, and the only thing that showed he'd been back at all were... A small pile of sketches he'd drawn on some scrap paper from my printer. I'm gonna have an egg. On each there was a clown. The same clown. A shock of dark hair, mm. vertical on the top of his head. A purple Porcelain head. white face, <clears throat> bright red lips painted in a wide, pointed smile, and a crimson diamond running down each cheek from just below his eyes. The lips may have been smiling, but the mouth my brother had drawn was dark empty circle that made me feel cold. I should have called the police. Well, maybe not now I've met some of the ones who've dealt with these cases, but I shouldn't have followed him. <laughs> and that is a nod to um, Daisy and Basira. That, that is a big heckin' nod to Daisy and Basira. That is that is season three Tim creeping back in just for a moment to remind you that he's the one who's reading this. Oh boy. I shouldn't have checked the notes Danny left about where to get in and what to watch out for en route. There's never really any hope for me though, was there? This was how it was always going to go. A crab. Oh god. Danny's notes were very comprehensive. Finding the entrance to the old, disused part under the Royal Opera House wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it might be. He hadn't reattached the chain he'd broken to get in, and he didn't look like anyone had noticed to replace it. Oh, it's Frank the here. Hey, Frank. Stood open, what up? And even though it was the middle of the day, it became almost completely dark as soon as it crossed the threshold. I think he must have done some work on the hinges too, because even though I could see the rust eating through them, the door opened in complete silence. I stepped inside. Back then, 
I didn't know enough about Robert Smirk's architecture to recognise his work. I just thought it was a really well-preserved sublevel. The corridors were wide and solid, and my torch showed columns that were that regular geometry that I've come to recognise. Compared to the summer heat outside, the, the air was up. cold. I found myself shivering in just my t-shirt and shorts. T-shirt and shorts. <laughs> Stud of course. Of course. Of course Tim went out in a t-shirt and shorts. Booty shorts unconfirmed. But definitely a choice. Definitely a choice. The whole place looked spotless. A lot cleaner than any pictures I've ever seen of urban exploration or abandoned sites. I couldn't really see why the Royal Opera House above wouldn't use this space. Why they just let it sit here untouched and hidden behind a locked and unmarked steel door just off of James Street. I was still wondering about this when I walked into the auditorium. At the time, I wasn't exactly sure what I was looking at. But I've now seen pictures of the Second Theatre Royal in Covent Garden, the one designed by Smirk. I can say it was identical. A perfect recreation of the old stage and tiered seats, the decorations and the boxes. There are only two differences. That it was almost 20 feet below the ground where the original stage was, and that everything, from the floor to the seats, to the blank and faceless audience was entirely hewn out of crude stone. Man, man, this is, and this is when you know, and this is when you know. You know we were talking in the last episode about being sucked into an atmosphere and not realizing it until you break it? Well, here we are. We all got sucked in together. And now we're here. <laughs> Oh boy. <clears throat> Man. Oh, Miri. <laughs> I've just back read what Miri said. Oh my god. Danny, I'm trying to sneak into the opera house, but my booty shorts are tiny and I'm dummy thick and the clap of my cheeks keeps alerting the clowns. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> There was no light except for the headlamp I had taken from my brother's pack, <laughs> and it swept over a full house, four levels of unmoving stone watches, two thumb-sized indentations focused towards the stage. There was nothing that indicated they were any newer than the rest of the place. I walked down the steps to the edge of the top level where I'd entered, and I looked down towards the stage. My lamp barely illuminated the single figure that stood on it. God, I'm not talking about this enough, am I? Like, the the emotions that I was going through at this point were very, very confusing. Because I knew that for Tim, it was coming towards my last performance. Like, I knew that that was happening. I think at this point, I actually only had three performances left. Not in terms of episode numbers, but three times of actually being in the studio. Like, I actually, somewhere on my shelf, I actually have the last script that I ever read as Tim. And I'm fairly certain that I still have the script for this scene. But, like, I can't even begin to explain how weird it feels to know that you know that the end is coming. Like, to know that you know where the where the line is the cutoff point is like when you're when you're just acting and you're just sort of doing it like especially in podcasting i guess not so much with theater but like to know that that's it you know you you'll never stand up as that character again that was such a weird feeling and i i channeled all of the energy that i had into that performance into this one that uncertainty, that unknowing, that wanting to do more, wanting to do better, but knowing that no matter how hard I tried, it was never going to change. That is what I channeled into this. It was Danny. At least I, I think Kingdom it was. Kingdom of Julie, thanks for joining it us today. like him. Same hair, same clothes. There's something not right about how he looked. Like he was smaller somehow. 
slightly folded in on himself. It didn't matter. I shouted down to him to let him know I was there. He didn't look up, but when my voice echoed around the stone theatre, I knew I'd made a horrible mistake. 420 viewers, nice! From somewhere above me, a spotlight suddenly turned on, shining down onto the stage, painfully bright against the white stone. The air became uncomfortably hot, and there was some sort of music. The spotlight wasn't on Danny. Instead, it picked out a figure crouched in the corner. All ruffles and polka dots and tights. A now, this, this bit of the scene was the bit that we had to reshoot so much. Because, genuinely, I couldn't quite get the tone right of this bit. And so, like... We had to we had to do so many retakes to get that one take that worked for this. Clown. It crouched and contorted in the corner, hands backwards over its face. But not so much that I couldn't see the dark red patterns that seemed to flow down its eyes. I couldn't move. Slowly. So slowly. Its right arm reached out towards Danny. It placed its hand on the floor with a long, low groan, then pulled itself along the floor, the fabric of its colourful dress scraping the rough stone of the stage and its cheek rubbing against the ground, leaving a trail of red behind it. Then it was still for a second, before a leg reached out in front and it began to drag the rest of the clown behind it. Man. I always tell myself there was some force there. Oh god, I remember doing this Something. line. Oh god, I remember doing this line. Oh my god, I remember doing this line. I remember doing this line. Oh my god, the motivations for this were so... Ah! That held me in place and meant that all I could do was watch. Oh, God! <laughs> Sometimes, when I think back, I remember how my legs shook and... Maybe I could move. Maybe I'm just a coward. The clown reached my brother, who still hadn't moved an inch, and unfurled to its full height. The red on the cheeks was now clearly blood, and something black oozed down from its shock of hair. Can you feel that slide back down, chat? Like, I mean, it's less of a slide and more of a bang crash, but like, seriously, that rip that comes straight from Tim being up here, and then you start to see some of the layers that have been, um, like, covering all of this stuff that this whole scene is tim basically showing you that he is still there and then right at the end it's all taken from you they took danny by the hand and looked up right at me smiling like nothing has ever smiled since shall i he asked with a voice so full of playful mischief that I felt bile rise in my throat. I wanted to shake my head, say no. Hello Lady Vine H, welcome to the chance. channel. Great to have you here. With a single, smooth motion, like whipping the tablecloth off in a restaurant, he pulled the skin off of whatever had been pretending it was my brother. I don't know how to describe it, it was like an impressionist painting of a dancer, all colours and shapes that made you feel movement you couldn't see. Silently, imperceptibly and then moving the from music one position to another. Comes back in to reinforce the that this the isn't fun was anymore. Silent. And it was beautiful. The next thing I remember was the cool night air on my face as the Opera House patrons pushed past me to get into the evening performance of Tosca. 
In my hands I held an old black and white circus flyer. It was written all over in Cyrillic, but in the bottom left corner was a certain clown's face, leering out at me, billed as the guest performer. As I watched, it crumbled to ash and floated away on the breeze. I loved, I loved delivering that line. I think there are some lines that I could pick out as being my best, my favorite lines to deliver. That, honestly, one of my favorites. It's it's right up there. The floated away on the breeze thing. I loved delivering that line. And that was the last time you ever saw your brother? Yeah. You never went back? To the auditorium? No. If I had, I'd... I don't think they'd let me leave a second time. That's why you joined the Institute, isn't it? I thought I might be able to find something about what happened, but... It all comes together! And then it all comes at together! At some point, I stopped seriously looking and started to just get comfortable. Until John... Until the archives. Yeah. Tim, the, the clown that you described yeah, is... I know. It didn't take too much looking around to match the description of Victorian London's most famous clown. Joseph Cromaldi. Covent Garden Theatre regular. I mean, 200 years is a long time, but... Yeah. It's him, though. Or it looks like him, or his ghost, or something. I don't know why, but I think he's with the Russian circus. Yeah. You reckon they're trying to what? End the world? I mean, maybe it's not... Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And no one told me. Yeah, that, here yes, to tell that is what is I going to happen. Thank, thanks, Martin, for that it's a stute claim that we now all know where that led. Oh, my lord. I don't care about the rest of it. If anyone's going to find that circus, I'm coming to. You're not going to stop me. I mean, sh sure, sure. I think that's actually a good... Knock, idea. knock. <sighs> Great. <laughs> Martin, would you give us a... <laughs> oh, my god. I remember being sat across the table and delivering that line straight to Ben's face. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was so it was so much fun to do this scene. Like honestly, it was ridiculous. It was so much fun. And obviously Ben is very very talented, so this was like Oh, this was this whole experience was like ecstasy for me. Two, it was you're not gonna stop me. I mean, sh sure, sure. I think that's actually a good knock. knock. <sighs> Great. Oh, Martin, would you give us a moment? <laughs> I... Uh, please. Uh, right. Um. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Yeah, go on, Martin. Off your off your toddle now. It's time for you're uh, watching then. Time for the boys to. Uh, have a little a little chat at while you uh crack on. Good luck. Most of it. Surprised you didn't know it already. That's your thing, isn't it? I knew there was some trauma that drew you to us, but I can't say I ever thought to look much deeper. An oversight, perhaps, but I'm looking now. Alright. Hit me with your X-ray eyes then, boss. What do you see? Disruption. <laughs> An unpredictable, angry man with nothing left but the desire to feel in some way revenged. Oh, terrifying. Surely only magic could have let you see so deep inside my very soul. I loved performing this so goddamn much. And I didn't realise how much until it came across on the audio. Like, oh my god, this was fun to do. God, this was fun to do. Tim, I'm only going to tell you this once. Please stay away from the unknowing, the circus, all of it. I don't believe you can help, and I don't know what will happen if you get involved. Oh, sure. I'll just forget about it. Go back to sulking in a corner. Tim, don't worry about me, boss. I'll just stop. That's what I'm best at, right? Fucking just fucking hit him! Just hit him! We're all screaming at Tim! Just hit the guy! <laughs> oh my god. Don't want to get in the way of your evil plans, do I? I mean it, Tim. Oh, oh, you mean it? Oh, well, that's different. Okay, well, let me tell you what. If you want me to ignore everything that's going on, forget my brother and everything that's happened over the last two years, how about you kill me? Oh. Oh. 
I don't want it to come to that. Oh, just here. Just, get, just pick up the chair, Tim. Just pick up the chair. Just pick up the chair. Da. Or well, me either. But here we are. So my proposal for you is this. Either kill me, or fuck off. Yes! Yes, everyone! Yes! Oh my god! What a law! Yes! Boom! I, I, do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Hold on. Hold the flipping phone, chat. Because that actually was a piece of fan art that I got made years and years and years ago. I don't know if you're going to actually be able to see this. I'm going to come in real tight for you. Hold on. Look. See? Whoa. Someone made this for me a long time ago. If you're in the chat right now, thank you so much. It still lives with me on my shelf. I love it. Um, so, yeah. What a time. What a time. <clears throat> That, I, that I, talking about lines, talking about lines that I love delivering. Good lord, was that a line? Good lord, was that a line? Whew. Hot stuff. I'll come back when you're feeling more reasonable, and I guess I'll see you in hell. <laughs> oh my god, I loved doing this scene so much. I'll piss off. <laughs> Archives is a podcast oh, distributed by Rusty Quinn, my God. under a Creative Commons. Oh my God, chat! That is an odyssey of an episode, isn't it? I love it. I I know that I'm talking about my own work here, and maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion. But good God, was that such a fun thing to shoot? We did it over two separate days. Like uh, it, we did the start bit and the end bit, and then we did the middle bit. Like I I God, I I can't even begin to tell you. I can't even begin to tell you. Right. How how good it feels! Join I can't even begin to tell you how good it feels. The website or on Reddit oh my lord! Slash the Magnus Archives. Oh, thanks for listening. Oh, chat. Whoa, JJ Hunter twenty four. Thank you very much for the one thousand bits. Oh my lord. Oh, goddamn. Well, I mean, we we all know. We all know where it leads from there, chat. But good God, was that an episode. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Right. Now, so I'm going to take a quick break here, I think, chat. Because um, this is, uh, I, well, basically, I really, really, really need the loo. <laughs> Cards on the table. Um, so I'm going to give you the corgis. And we'll be back. We'll be back in just a moment for um, what is going to be episode 161. Um, now, I love this episode. I love where it went. I love Extended season five. Extended sounds of brutal Elias face punching. Indeed, a wild Miri. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. And Twiglets are great to eat. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. Um, now, we are going to we are going to be playing 161. Crunchy has been um, tallying all of your votes for what episode you might want to see after that. If we have enough time, like I say. Crunchy, I think it's time to put that poll up now. If we have enough time, we'll do two more episodes. Um, or, I mean, who knows? If you guys want it. We might just do two more episodes anyway. So, <clears throat> thanks, Crunchy. So, I will see you guys after this very short break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. We'll be right back here, chat. So, see you very soon. Hello, chat. Hello, everyone. I am back. Thank you very much for bearing with me there. I have got myself some more water. I'm all topped up. And it looks like you guys have voted for what episode you want to see next. Wow, what choices as well. 100, 111, 170, and Epiphany. But it looks like you guys have voted for Epiphany. So, it looks like that's where we're going to be going after this episode, if we have enough time. So, chat. So, season five. The first episode of season five, actually, Dwelling. Now, this was a very special episode for me, personally. And the reason for that is because in this episode, I actually got to perform with Lottie again. I got to I got to sit side by side with Lottie Broomhall, and we actually got to play Sasha and Tim. Like, I loved coming back into the studio. I remember getting the casting call for this and thinking, wait, really? And then I had a look at the list and I was like, 
what? <laughs> Genuinely, I I looked so I looked it up and down, and I was like, "You being serious?" And and it turned out that it was true. That I actually got to perform alongside Lottie again. Uh, maybe Jam, or maybe Jem. Sorry, welcome to the channel. Now, at that point, because after I think after um, the end of season three, because I wasn't necessarily doing that much anymore. I mean, I had all the time in the world for that. And after Tim had been performing with The Rage for so long, like, it was actually really, really nice to be able to play Tim from season one again. Um, and in this, we actually managed to get some really, like, original Tim Sasha stuff again. And I, I loved it. Um, like, genuinely. I, it really does have a special place in my heart. So, shall we listen, chat? Shall we listen instead of just jibber-jabbering away here? Let's actually have a listen to the first episode of Season 5 of the Magnus Archives, Dwelling. Hi everyone, Alex here, Director of the Magnus Archives and voice of Martin on the show. Alex, please, we don't have time for you to talk for 20 minutes. It's during this season break. Are you still... T Alex, please, are you still talking? There we go. New logo! Rusty Quill presents. The Magnus Archive. What do you want? Do you want to listen to Alex at the beginning? Do you want to? Do you want to go back and listen to Alex? Is that what you want? Yes. <laughs> no. F for Alex. <laughs> do you? No. No love for Alex. No, you don't. No, you're you're good. All right. Okay. Well, fine then. Why? Well, why are you kicking up such a fuss then, chat? <laughs> Everyone's like F for Alex, and then they're like, No, I didn't want to listen to it. <laughs> What is this? Work with me here, chat. Work with me. He'll be back at the end, don't worry. Episode 161. Dwelling. I know you love Alex. I know that there's a lot of Alex people here. That's great. And I love you all and I preach. We don't need it right now. We don't need Alex right now. He can come back later and do the thing. Are we ready? Here we go. Careful! Shh. Surprise! Jesus! Happy birthday, boss. Ha this was such a weird scene to shoot. I can't even begin to tell you. Be oh, are you okay? Like, the feeling that you get from this bit isn't uh, like it's exactly the feeling that we all had in the studio because it was me alex so it was me as tim alex as martin lottie as sasha and ben as elias and obviously johnny as john like and, and it was like we had been teleported all the way back to season one and we were performing under blankets in the corner of a room again it genuinely was just like that and i loved it Oh, shh. Surprise! Jeez! Oh, the captions. Sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, chat. Sorry, the captions. Happy birthday, Bob. Surprise, Happy... Jesus! Oh, are you okay? No, I... Christ, one second. Sorry, sorry, Tim wanted to surprise you and... Snitch? No, it's fine. Thank you. Just a shock. Well, that's the idea. Indeed. Though, uh, honestly, the bottle of wine was... Just fine. <laughs> yeah, as a decoy. Yes, well, thank you. This you know what happens to snitches, huh, chat? Elaborate of you. Plus, it was kind of fun giving they you get a heart wine attack. Mm, and a very I'm good sure. retirement package. I know she didn't jump out of Martin <laughs> when he had a birthday. No, he's way too jumpy as it is. What? We were worried he might damage himself. Hey! Well, I preferred going out for ice cream anyway. Went for ice cream? Yes, you were there. You had rum and raisin and taught us all about emulsifiers. Oh, right, yes. I, I remember. Via. Buyer. <laughs> well, thank you anyway. It's all very touching. We just wanted to do something to lighten the mood, you know? Yes, I'm aware it's been a rough start. That's not what this was about. We just thought you could use a chance to unwind. I suppose it couldn't hurt. God, there's so much not joy. Not. There's so Double much boss. joy in this episode, Elias? in the performance I'm and everything. I'm not too late for cake, am I? There's a cake? How 
did you... Martin, that was a secret. I didn't say anything. He didn't have to. Nothing escapes my notice, and I Flipping like to keep an eye out for this sort of thing. Double well, boss. it's good to see you. Yes, yeah, yes, uh, come in. So. That is the only time in the entirety of Magnus, as far as I'm aware, where Tim ever says to Elias, it's good to see you. The only time. One. How old is the birthday this is boy? my first uh, time being able to listen Liar? live and I absolutely <laughs> adore it. What does thank someone need to change their password again? You. What? You're welcome, I've lost <laughs> my spectacles and thank you for the 100 bits. Not come no stay, idea grab coffee. Of course not. <laughs> it's really not appropriate. Oh, come on, guys. Anyway, anyway uh, did somebody mention cake? Uh, yeah, you did. Oh, yes, I did, didn't I? <sighs> all right, all right, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag now anyway. Look, just give me a second. Speaking of scenes that were fun to shoot, I had such a blast with this one. Such a blast. Happy birthday to you. Genuinely singing with the entire cast, happy birthday to Johnny, when we all knew it wasn't his birthday. Like, I've been to Johnny's birthday parties before. And we, I think we've sung a happy birthday every time. It was so weird to do it in character. <laughs> happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday, yes. dear Jacobin. Oh, that was a choice. Happy this birthday episode birthday hit my heart so you. much. Right, yay. yes, thank you. I do hope you're not planning to light those. That yay from me was improvised. <laughs> Can you believe that wasn't in the script? But I did it anyway, and I did a little clap above the microphone. <laughs> little clap. Yay! Those candles. Oh, goodness. A source of ignition in the archives. No, Johnny uh -oh. didn't script the okay. yay. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Sorry, my hand slipped. And again, and again, and a couple more times here. I'm so clumsy today. That is a lot of I'm fire. I'm really not comfortable So, with... blow them out then. Oh. Right, yes. And make a wish. If I wish for you all to go away, do you think it'll work? He's so grumpy today, isn't he, Martin? Uh, oh, do well, you think I... it's his looming sense of mortality? <laughs> I, I Fine. Think... Oh, foreshadowing. Oh, foreshadowing. Yay! So, what did you wish for? I can't tell you. He wished for a little bit of peace and quiet. Was it that obvious? Oh, I wouldn't worry, John. It's an archive. Quiet is very much the course de jour. Well, I mean, well, he got his wish eventually, didn't he? Huh? Why? I mean, that's something we can all take left. home, is that eventually he got his wish. He wished for peace and quiet. Lord, did he get it. Then in the morning. <laughs> yeah, at your birthday party. I really don't think it's appropriate. I'll allow it. In fact, I'll join you. Oh, okay. Um, all, all right then. Martin? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't normally drink wine, you know, t tannins are a proven headache trigger, and so... Martin. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, maybe just a, a drop. <laughs> you know that there's a lot of tannin in tea as well. What? Hang on, have you been recording this? Uh, oh, yeah. I just thought it might be nice. You know, something to look back on when we're all old and sick of each other. You probably should have told us, Tim. <laughs> what, are you afraid we're going to get sued over the happy birthday song? That line... I don't know if you know this, but that line was actually motivated by a genuine concern that we had on the production team, which is that we, I think, had to wait until the Happy Birthday song lapsed copyright before we could put it into the Magnus archives. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, I am now. It's just a bit of a privacy thing. Oh, all right, all right, fine. Look, I'm turning it off. Any last words for your future selves? Yes. Fire Tim. <laughs> <laughs> now, that laugh at the end is something that I did because I actually corpsed when Johnny said it the first time. And we did several more takes and... We decided to keep it in. <laughs> um, so that that actually wasn't the way it was meant to go. But like it <laughs> but like the But we kept it in. I thought that was very fun. 
And then the change. And then the change. Hey. Hi. You, uh, listening to the tapes again? How many times is that now? They were sent to me, Martin. There's got to be some reason. Gloating, John. Elias won, and there were some tapes he'd kept for himself, and he wanted to gloat. So he sent them. He's I, not I don't see... Elias. Jonah, then. I don't know. I find it hard to think of him as... I don't really like to think of him. You know, one of the things that I've I've noticed is that of all of the character arcs, Martin's is actually the most, in terms of tone, is actually the most consistent. Because John, at this point, is very much a broken man. Tim, by the end of it, was also very much broken. Pretty much everyone was broken by the end of it. But Martin is the only one who actually kept it all in. That's a lot. Like, that is a lot. Think of how much emotional stress that guy must be holding in his chest. Think of the amount of stuff that he's been through. Like, that. Now, that. That is real strength right there. You should get some sleep. Oh, I boy. Can't. I, I, I can't. I don't think I do anymore. Sleep. How long's it been now? I don't know. It's not like there are days to count anymore. All the clocks are stopped and... Martin is basically like the camera crew for Bear Grylls. Like, Bear Grylls does all the stuff in front of camera and does all the, like, the amazing action stuff. But then he has a camera crew who has to do all of that stuff with, like, 20 pounds of equipment strapped to them. Like, seriously. <clears throat> well, I haven't yet. I get tired, but it doesn't feel the same. Probably for the best. Sleep doesn't look... pleasant. No, it's... It's not. I couldn't wake you. I'm sorry. It's not. You're not the one who ended the world. Well, just as well I don't remember my dreams. I do. What? He's not wrong. They... I see most of the suffering around here. When it's quiet, it just... It's like I can... See it like I'm watching all of it. You haven't been opening the curtains. There's the very subtle oh, music trickling in in the background. You can feel it coming it in. I can see us here. And you can feel it just I in the undertone. It's well. like a little undercurrent. Okay, we'll just file that under ominous for now. This is episode uh, 161. We seem safe enough in here at least. I suppose so. Bit of a hideaway? Or a prison. Uh, yes. Still, better than outside. It sounds bad. <laughs> it is. Are we still safe? Yes, it... It doesn't want to harm me. Are and they, me? though? I won't let it. Are they, though? Um... Thanks. I mean, the out... When the outside is screaming... That may be a sign that you're not safe anymore. You know, it's like in any situation. It, it's like any situation that you're in. If outside your house is screaming, you are no longer safe. Um, just to say. Just to say. John, it's not your fault. Martin, can we not do this again? Sorry. I'm just... I'm mourning a world I killed. I know. And we're all trapped in its rotting corpse. Enough, John. Have you heard the Gertrude one? What? Oh. The Gertrude tape. There are a few of them. But Here's our gal. I, I don't... Just... Oh, Listen. Gertrude Robinson's coming back. Brace yourselves, chat. Right. If you're listening to this, then it is likely that... No. Let's not beat around the bush. If you're listening to this, it means I'm dead. Mm. And you have been chosen to be my replacement. Hey, as one head EA underscore. Welcome to the channel. Hopefully this means you, Sasha. But if someone else is hearing this and Elias has made a different choice for Sasha. some reason, then these words are still very much intended for you. Sasha was meant to be the archivist. Sasha 
was meant to be the archivist. Can you imagine how different it would have been? Can you imagine how different it would have been? Before I continue, it is very important to be absolutely clear this is not a joke, nor is it any sort of prank or game. Your colleagues have not convinced me to record this as an attempt to haze you. This is completely serious and very, very important for you to know. I'm super serial right now. If it is you I'm talking to, Sasha, hopefully your background in artifact storage will lend a certain degree of credence to my words. But others may have to take it on trust. All I can do is assure you I am deadly serious. Deadly serious. So deadly. The first thing you have to do Listen to these you listen to these adjectives, chat. You are in great danger. Listen to and will them. be for the rest of your life. There are now things that will actively be trying to kill you due to your new role as archivist. And Elias has plans for you that are little better. You will also be unable to relinquish the position or quit the Institute, finding you are supernaturally compelled to remain. Well, in fact, kind it of like to me it's kind of like the opposite of UPS. The UPS are supernaturally compelled not to remain. They they never remain. They'd stand on your doorstep for like five seconds, then run away and give you a attempted delivery note. The archives is different. ...that attempting to do so is probably the quickest and easiest way to establish the truth of what I am telling you. So I suggest you do so at the earliest possible opportunity. Things you need to be aware of. There exist in our world supernatural entities of incredible power that reflect and feed on the fears of all living creatures, but most commonly humans. Little did we know that the actual supernatural entity that feasts on the fears of living humans was McDonald's. Did you know? I didn't know. I did, did any of you know? I had no idea. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Many consider them gods. And while I believe that is far too simplistic a comparison, for our purposes here, it is perhaps the most useful shorthand. They do not rule our world, but they do exercise considerable power. Which... What, what is it, chat? I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Which they generally manifest in the form of monstrous beings that spread further fear. I'm just putting or it in your head. Incarnations. If you think about McDonald's through the entirety of this, it starts to fit together. Those humans who have willingly, though not always knowingly, chosen to take on the power of these entities. You, unfortunately, have unwittingly made the decision to become one of those incarnations. For the Institute serves a being known variously as the Eye, it knows you, the Beholding, the Ceaseless Watcher. It is mm -hmm. the fear of being watched and judged and having all your secrets known. Do you know what? It's actually really funny. My, um, so I actually did, I studied psychology at undergraduate, and I actually specialised in parapsychology at that point, and I specialised in the feeling of being watched. <laughs> now that, now that was a bit of a weird parallel that I found throughout the course of the Magnus Archives, but um, just a little fact for you. The Institute serves as a way for it to harvest the fears of the other entities. No, I'm not joking. Dragging out no, the I'm suffering not of those who come to give statements and claiming their terror. But there is another part of being the archivist. These beings, these gods of fear, their followers believe that they have rituals. Grand projects which if successful, would allow them to enter our world, reshaping it in unthinkable ways, moulding it into a dimension be? where terror is as natural as gravity. Maybe McDonald's' ritual would be like making the Big Mac sauce. Yeah, maybe. You 
are now one such ritual. Mm, I do not know the exact point. details of it, but be wary of whatever Elias asks you to do. Oh, yes. On the subject of Elias, trust nothing he says. He was originally known <laughs> as Jonah Magnus, the Max. founder of this institute, <laughs> and I have known him also as... Surely a Grand Mac is better or otherwise known as the Mac Daddy. You know what I mean? James Wright, the previous head of the Institute. Just saying. He has certain abilities of clairvoyance which allow him welcome, to perceive chat. out of <laughs> any eye, You're welcome. real or symbolic. So be wary. Play ignorant as long as you can while you expand your own research. I've managed to keep the archives in a state of chaos for decades, as I believe his plan would benefit from their organization. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this episode was because of the Magnus archives. <laughs> it was because in this, it's finally revealed that Gertrude was actually intentionally keeping the archives. This was technically the first tape that she made, and she was actually keeping the archives disorganized, which is something which is directly referenced in episode one that we watched at the beginning of this stream. Isn't that cool? Nice but little callback. I back. leave that to your judgment. Certainly, the longer he is ignorant of how much you know, the better. Above all else... Tactical ready. mess, yeah. Like my desk. There are many things out there, loyal to other powers, which know your importance to the eye, and will want you dead. You are entering a new world, a place I've lived for most of my life. A place... A place that will often demand a high price There's you. that music swell. Pay it without hesitation, because one way or another, the world is now on your shoulders. Now, one of the really cool things about this episode is that that music that you just heard was the same music that we used in season one. It comes back full circle. The music that we made in season two, we used through seasons two, three, and four. Then, for the first episode of season five, that music is from season one. I wish I had more time to explain it to you. And that, and that is something that you wouldn't have even known, but it's such a nice little subtle nod to the early episodes. That time is short, and hopefully my actions tonight will ensure this tape never needs to see the light of day. But if you are hearing it, then good luck. Do what you have to do. <sighs> Are you finished? Jürgen, I told you to stay in the tunnels. Your message also told me it was urgent. If Elias is watching right now... Now... Then your recording all that was just meaningless to say, chat, anyway. Just to say, this is Johnny's mum performing to Johnny's dad. Now that... Just let that settle in for a moment. Yeah, the fact that she calls him Jürg as well. Like, there are so many layers to this scene. Like, this is this is the Sims family performing with each other about their son, who, and they're having, like, a parental kind of conversation. Not necessarily directly about John, but about Sasha, fundamentally, who was meant to become the archivist, but then John did. Besides, I'm not afraid of him. Bravado. <laughs> really? Mm, it's not bravado. We're wasting time. I love Do this. you still have the Ruskin book? I actually had a chat with Johnny's dad the other day because he was asking me uh, some questions about like uh, some of the editing programs that we use. And it's very weird to hear his voice over the phone. I haven't admitted that to him, but uh, it's, it's super cool. I do, though I don't relish the thought of using it. Makes it rather hard to breathe, like your chest You know the being... gas main little way out in the tunnel. I do. I need you to move it. I am... Um, that's 
I mean, that's not just earth. That's pipework and all sorts of Find things. a way. I need it to be directly under the Institute, or at least closer. I'm more likely to rupture it and fill the place with gas. <laughs> that would also be acceptable. Hmm. I'll do what I can. When do you need it? If my guess is right, the church's ritual should be collapsing at any time hmm. now, so immediately. And if you're wrong? Then a bit of gas will be the least of our worries. Well, then. Right. Well, What then. are you going to do? Paper burns well. Petrol burns better. <laughs> I always forget about your pyromaniac streak. <laughs> Remind me to tell I always, you about that. I always forget that you like to burn down buildings. <laughs> I love how that is a light point in this podcast. This sometime. Right. <laughs> Did you mean to leave the tape running? Oh, good grief. Forty years I've been using them, and I swear I'll never... Can you imagine if we'd had this? But we didn't, though, did we? No. So there's no point in dwelling. Hey! He said the name of the episode! Woo-hoo! <laughs> oh, my God! There's no point in dwelling. On a... Yeah, roll credits. Cut to black. Job done. That's it. We're, we're leaving. That's it. We're done. Yeah, all, all good. Clap hands. This isn't Easy healthy. Mode. I am an avatar of voyeuristic terror whose unquestioned craving for knowledge has condemned the entire world to an eternity of torment. Healthy, it isn't it's not fine, fine, I get it. Besides, grief is healthy. If nothing else, it pushes away the other feelings that that thing wants me to experience. It just it hurts me to see you wallowing like this. Well, some of us weren't able to cut ourselves off from the world before it ended. That's not fair. No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. I just... It hurts. Nice. I know. I need time. I know. Nice. But we can't stay in this cabin forever. Why not? Beautiful. It, it's quiet here. Beautiful, I, I isn't you. it? The acting. <laughs> what about food? What about it? When's the last time you thought to eat, or, or even felt hungry? What? What? I don't know. No. Whatever is sustaining us now doesn't need us to eat. That... that can't be possible. It's a new world, Martin. The natural laws are whatever they want them to be. And I suspect they don't much care to keep humanity fed and watered. Tidy bit of world building. Well, that as may be, we can't just stay here forever. What could possibly be out there that you want to see? A way to stop this, a way to turn the world back. Do you really think there is one? I remember well, editing the trailer is, for it's this. It's not in here, is it? It's so... It's so loud out there. Do you know what? I, when I made the trailer for this, I was given the audio for the trailer as, like, the main point that I should listen to. And I think I was actually given episode one as well, as, like, a, as an idea of where it was going. And then, obviously, we put the trailer together. But, like, when, when I created the trailer, I wanted to include the smoke effect, because the smoke effect was something that we had used through all of the YouTube versions of the Magnus Archive. So it had to have smoke in, which is why the whole thing is sort of premised by this idea that... There's this mist sort of around and it's uh, it, it sort of is an atmosphere of uncertainty. But like, I didn't realize how on tone we actually hit that trailer uh, because all of the rest of season five has basically had that kind of misty, foggy uncertainty to it. The agony, the, the terror, I can see it all so much more clearly. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, uh, I love you. I just, I need more time. It's all right. It's all right. I'm good at waiting. Thank you. I just wish it didn't feel like whatever's out there was waiting to. Now that tugs, doesn't it? That tugs on the old heartstrings. The way the way that that line is delivered, or those lines are delivered, is just sublime. The fact that it, it's getting all of you to to experience that moment, superb. Ooh. Yeah. 
Hey, when, when did you start recording? I didn't. I only brought one and oh, I've been using it to play the tone. Here it comes. Here comes oh. the tone shift. That's not a great sign. No. No, it's not. And the lingering high note that doesn't stop when the tape stops. Now, we talked about this right at the very beginning. When the tape stops, everything stops. But not this time. And we know why that is, don't we, chat? Very good. A very good thing. The Magnus Archives hey. is a podcast oh, distributed by Lord. Rusty Quill and licensed under a Woo. Creative Commons attribution. Rachel Elegram, welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining us today. Now Today's then. This episode was written by Jonathan Sims, now produced then. by Laurie Ann Davis, and directed Chats. by Alexander J. Newell. It featured Alexander J. Newell it as Martin sure Blackwood, was a podcast. Lottie Broomhall as Sasha James, Mike LeBeau as Tim Stoker, Jonathan oh. Sims as The Archivist, stop. Ben Johnny, Meredith stop as it. Jonah stop Magnus, it. Stop it, Johnny, stop Sue it. Sims as Gertrude Robinson, and Paul Sims as Jürgen Leitner. Me. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at RustyQuill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at RustyQuill.com. Join our community on Discord via the website or on Reddit at r slash the Magnus Archives. God, Thanks this for listening. God, this got long at the end. God damn, did that get long at the end? Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Ashton, Andrea Paternoster, Issa, Laurie Rich, Lizzie Jacobs, Elizabeth Dixon, Robin Alez, Joe Bell, Veronica P, Sam and Phobos, Kira, Dr. Bad Vibes, Sarah Freeman, Hannah Earnshaw, Anne Fabe, Kiro, Lauren Nabbett, Hannah Jordan, Robin Stone, Nancy Crawford, Kirsten Jeffords, The Laughing Kookaburra, Murmuruk, Mrs. Mitabump, George Cardas, Jess Donaldson, Constantin Valdor, Joya Vita, James Rule, Probs Not Josh, Izzy Aliberti, Ethan Morris, Deborah Mitchell, and Carad, Sarah and Michelle Poyani, Matthew McCorkle, Nikki Nelson Hicks, Vili Canelli, Sam Oliver, Tails Hunter. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look She's at our rewards. still talking! Good Lord, Alex! <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, okay, so, chat. We have actually got time for one more and you guys have voted for the episode that you want and the episode that you want actually isn't one that we currently have on youtube believe it or not it's the fluff uh, the fluff episode um and specifically it is uh what did you vote for again it is epiphany um so we are going to listen to epiphany uh i don't actually necessarily have any visuals to show you so what I might do, oh no, I know what I can do. Hold on, chat. I've got an idea. Come here. Come here, file. Come here. There we go. Right, I've got an idea, chat. I've got a visual that I can that I can give you. Just give me give me one minute and we'll shove it we'll shove it right on. Okay? Just give us a mo. I'll get you this visual. Because I've got one. I've actually got a visual that I can show you. Ready for this. Yeah, I know, my file secrets, huh? Um, we've actually got we've actually got a visual. We do. Where's my visual? It's in here. Uh, this this. Perfect. Perfection. Just zoom it in. There. Just, just zoom it in a little bit more. Here. There we go. Perfect. There. That's the one. All right, so it's time to listen to Epiphany, um, which is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and part of the Magnus Archives. Here we go. 
Now, it's been a long time since I've Hello, actually listened to Emma this. Hello, this is Emma Gannon from Control-Alt-Delete, and my podcast is sponsored by Microsoft 365. If you have specific goals this year, Wait, why not on. reach them faster with Microsoft 365? Create amazing content quickly and stay organised with premium Office We're not apps. sponsored Plus, by these. Plus, you get one terabyte of OneDrive cloud storage. Why? I'm definitely someone needing more storage these days. Main- there we go. Now that that was better, wasn't it, chat? It's <laughs> I mean, we need the ads. We need the ad revenue because that's part of how we make our money. But at the same time, we don't necessarily need it right now. How are we doing? Has Endgame changed everything? Oh my god, it's still it's still flipping going. Good lord. It's just end. Of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh my god, I don't care about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I kind of do. But not right now. There. There. Have we... Wait, is this... Have we gone to a retirement home? Are we about to get sold... Is this an ad for, like, a pyramid scheme? Hi everyone. Oh my Alex god. Here, part-time nightmare merchant, full-time sweetheart. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about hope, joy, and other fluffy human I feelings I've been made aware of recently. Intro. <laughs> Life is hard. We get it. The world is a scary place at the moment, and it can sometimes feel cruel, dark, and willfully manipulated by inhuman monsters who don't have your best interests at heart. Oh fuck. Are we here at Rusty Towers? Do have your best interests at heart. Yeah, and we, we do. To do something nice for all of you who are feeling a bit overwhelmed. Yeah, bit we we have your best bit. interests at so, heart, so. Alex. We do. That's why we ran the Magnus Archives Fluff Competition. These are our best interests. Their own Magnus Archives content, right? Horror free and full of love. Can I make this any bigger? So curl up under a blanket with the warm liquid beverage of your choice. The warm, Close your eyes. Oh, don't and enjoy say the liquid, Alex. That's right. it's just a horrible word for you to say. Epiphany, by Jack Beckwith. Jack who? Good work, Jack. I'm proud of you. I feel like I have just retired. I feel I feel like actually what just happened was I just experienced what it was like to retire. All over it. And like live on a farm. Like I, I feel like now I have I have finally made it to that point in my life where I'm sat on my like two oh one whatever and I'm I've got money and I've maybe I don't know, maybe I'm in some like I'm in a field. Uh, full of dandelions, and that's where I've retired. Possibly on a deck chair, probably with some whiskey. You know what I mean? Wonderful. All right. Are you ready, chat? We're going in. We're going in deeper. Here we go. Beckwith, you did a great job. Alex, you did a great job. Epiphany. By M. Mike and begging, K. please release us Blackwood. from Ben Face. You don't want the Ben Face anymore. Okay, well, look, if you don't want the Ben Face anymore, I can we can get rid of that. No, it's still there. We need something to cover it. We need something to cover it over. Is there anything that I have to be able to cover Ben's face? There might actually be. Actually, do you know what? I've got exactly the one. I've got exactly the one. I know where to go, chat. I know what must be done. I know what must be done. Please give us a corgi. You, Thank you very much for the 100 bits. Look, I'm finding you something that's better than a corgi. And that's very difficult for me to say. Hold on. I'm finding it. I'm cooking it up for you right now. Perfect. Perfection. There we go. Better? Possibly. We're going back in. I was not expecting this. This was so much more. You have stayed the hungry hunters. You have locked death's door. <laughs> For all your skull. Oh my god, I remember this. <laughs> yeah, death's door. <laughs> that line. That's me every single 
fucking time. He even did in the studio. I was there when this was being recorded. Hulking, slinking, sneering. For all I was fearing, I was not expecting this. For you to step into the light and reveal yourself. I see you. I see the lamb you hide under the wolf skin. I was ha, Martin. Mm. What are you up to? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Notes. <laughs> I uh, notes. Yes, mm. <laughs> taking uh, notes. I have. Can uh -huh. I help you? I oh, missed this. Uh, I thought I'd see how quarantine sleepaway camp is treating you. Oh. Brought down a change of sheets for your cot. So thought you might need it. Oh, that's. Thanks, Tim. That's that's really kind. I really anything miss this. On your mind? Oh, <laughs> plenty. Homesick. <laughs> Mortal terror, you mm. know, the usual. Mm. Mm. I, w I was actually mm -hmm. thinking of trying mm -hmm. to go see my mum, but, mm -hmm. well, the mm -hmm. the worms mm -hmm. and, I mean, you know, plus sometimes she can be... Mm. Kind of, yeah, kind that's of... great. Anything Whatever. else? What? Oh, come off it, Martin. I saw you in the break room the other day. How do you mean? Sasha and I were hosing down some of our little visitors with a friendly CO2 bath, and you could hardly be bothered by any of it. You... Oh, oh, Sasha and I were hosing down. If you know what I mean. Am I right, Jack? Cue the music. If you, know, if you know what I mean. We're just there, staring wistfully off into space, running a finger around the rim of your mug. I was distracted. Give us a you whole new meaning like to the rim someone. of your mug line. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, mm. <laughs> I could mm -hmm. I, I really don't. Called it. Sasha owes me a fiver. Mm. So, who is it? I don't have to tell you anything. Is it Rosie? I know you've been talking about her a lot is lately. This, is this an interrogation now? So it is Rosie. No, it's, not, it's not Rosie. Oh, Tim, listen. All right, all right. We're getting somewhere. Oh, oh, it's not David, is it? What? Oh, Martin, you can do better. I mean, could be did David. You see what he was wearing? It's not David, and I don't want to do this. Okay. Now, if you could just I please mean, let me get Hannah's back to. Hannah's married. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not of the... her. No, no. Or no. wait. Are you being so dodgy about this because it's one of us? <laughs> this is Sasha, is it? Tim, I'm literally begging you. Oh. All right, fine, fine. Ooh. Out of your way. Keep Ooh. your precious secrets, but between you and me, can I at least offer you a little advice? I God, this was... get the feeling you're going to anyway. Look, nobody's going to notice you. This was so you much fun to shoot. yourself first. What? Okay, look, that came out wrong. Look, what I mean is, take care of yourself. Because I know you, Martin. You will give yourself away until there's nothing left of you to love. Oh, Beckworth, you wrote a... You wrote a blinder here, my friend. Goodness me. That's not fair. Oh, it's true. And you know it. This was genuinely so much fun to perform, by the way. Maybe. Look, I'm telling you this as a friend. Just think about it, okay? Whoever this is, they'll see... They'll see how great you are, not because of what you have to give away, but because of where you stand firm. He... There is a friendship. They are the friend. And after all of... Well, whatever the hell's been happening here, you... Because you can't ship them. Because if you ship Tim and Martin, you get Tartin. And that's lame. So, they are very friend. Do you know what I mean? Deserve something for yourself. Hey, that... That really means a lot. Thanks, I... I will think about it. Good. All right, well, I'm going to head you out. You can all say it's Martin if you want it to be, but we all know it isn't. Take care of yourself, too. Always do. <laughs> Finger guns. <laughs> oh, my God, that was the best unscripted moment that we ever had. Honestly, so much fun. Totally improv Loved it. Right, where was I? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was not expecting this, for the sharp pain of jaws to give way to you. Oh my god, Tim, Tim, sorry. normal people not, sorry. Normal people not, sorry. Tim. Hey, it's not me, is it? Would you stop? <laughs> if it is, you know. <laughs> That's That's okay. Just go away, just go away, Just putting Tim. it out there. Again. All right, all right. 
<laughs> Kay! <laughs> you cannot hide from me any longer, but I will try to hide from you. What? 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 What, what are you so irritable about? Oh, <laughs> Just been having a bit of a time, you know? Mm, haven't we all? What did Tim want? He was grinning. To Tim? Uh, oh, um, we were comparing notes on the Hither Green case. Oh. I see. Did you get anywhere? Maybe. Too soon to tell. All right, well, keep me updated. Uh, I also wanted you to try and track down a Mr Marcus Mackenzie. His father gave a statement in 2003. I'm mm. trying to follow up. A bit worried about this one. What? You, the, the father of all scepticism, worried. <laughs> Just because I don't think it happened doesn't mean I can't be worried. Oh. Uh, you all right? What? Down here, I mean. Uh, after everything, but out of house and home, it's not exactly five-star accommodations. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you don't need to worry mm. about me. I believe I've made my case for being entitled to worry, Martin. Oh, they are so in love already! Oh. They're so me, in love I'm, already! I'm all right. Well, oh, God in that damn. case... Get back to work. Just because you're living here doesn't mean it's not still a place of business. Yeah. Shut up, Martin. <laughs> it's still not a place of business, me. Martin. Oh, man. Oh. 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 Love it. Lo I love this. This content is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. This content... Thanks is distributed. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> oh, I I begged them, you know, for a while to just let me do one outro, just one, just one outro, but they wouldn't let me. Um. Anyway. John Martin, Tim Sashimot, Fall Archives, Polykill, White Smike. Yes, exactly, a Wildberry. Um, yes. Uh, so, chat. What a time we've had today. Oh my lord, this has been, this has been a stream, has it not? This has been a stream. Thank you so, so much for everyone who stopped by today to come and say hello. Um, of course, if you are new here, remember to hit that follow button right up here. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, remember to give us a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel? Um, and of course, I appreciate you all. Do you want me to do one now? Is that what you want me to do? All right, well, do you know what? We'll do one right now. We'll do one right now. How about that? <clears throat> yeah? We'll do that as the out. So thank you everyone who's donated bits and given subs today. I appreciate you so, so much. And thank you very, very, very much. If you do want to support us in other ways, we have a Patreon. You get loads of behind the scenes access stuff on there. Our next stream is going to be on Wednesday. Before we do the out, I have to tell you about next week because it is going to be oops all bangers. I promise you. Like... Next week, we have got not one, not two, not three, but four streams for you next week. Four, four streams. We have got Nico and Helen on Wednesday here at 5 p.m. Uh, who are going to be making pasta together. Now that is going to be awesome. 5 p.m. GMT. Don't miss that. Those two are super stoked about it. As am I. It's going to be epic. Then... On Friday, April, our artist for Aki Streams is going to be coming here and is going to be doing some Magnus-based sketch portrait work and showcasing to you some of the awesome stuff that we do behind the scenes. On Saturday, on Saturday, I am going to be back here and I am going to be playing a game that I have been waiting Literally since it came out to play, I am going to be playing Hitman 3. It's going to be a first time playthrough. I love the Hitman series, as I'm sure you're all aware of by now. That is going to be awesome. And then finally, by popular demand, on Sunday, on Sunday chat, I am going to be back here with my friends Nico, Helen, and Anil. And we are going to be doing the Geography Quiz Part 2. Code name: Mike versus Geography with friends. Now that is not going to be one to miss. So make sure 
that you are able to be here on those days because we are going to have such good fun. Such good fun. And it's going to be great. And you guys are going to love it. And we're going to love it. And we're all going to have a load of fun together. So, with that chat, I think it's time. I think it's time. <clears throat> Pause the music. RQ Streams is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial share-alike 4.0 international license. Today's episode was brought to you by Mike Lebeau and edited probably by Mike Lebeau as well because I do most of the editing for this show. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. I will see you next Saturday. Well, in fact, I'll see you before then. In fact, no, I won't. I'll see you next Saturday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, that was... That was a good ending. I enjoyed that. Mm. Yeah, that was... That was a good ending. I feel like I... I feel like I really nailed that that time. You know? There are lots of endings and uh well this one was this one was my own. I don't know what I would have done otherwise. I mean God damn, I'm so good at my job. What do you think? Me from Alien Isolation. Oh but Jesus! What what even is the oh my oh my lord, it's it's so it's so huge! I, I can't even have to do it. The Magnus Jagnus.